Good, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Zoning Board of Adjustment regular meeting for the month of March. And uh, this evening, we have a couple of announcements uh, right up on the top of the meeting regarding the uh, agenda for this evening. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, one is that the uh, request re relative to a project over in Raines Avenue area has been uh, requested to be postponed, and that is at the specifically the appeal of Duncan McCallum, the attorney for the appellants, which is a group of citizens, uh, residents, of the December 20. December 16th, 2021 decision of the Planning Board for property located at 31 Rains Avenue, 203 Maplewood Avenue, and 1 Rains Avenue. It will not be heard this evening. Hoping no one's come just for that. Uh, be due to a stay order issued by the Superior Court. In other words, it's not before this board, and I wish I could tell you if it will ever appear before this board, but at this point we simply do not know. So. Uh, if anyone ever wants to know the status of something like that, uh, you're welcome to call City Hall, ask for the planning department, and they can fill you in on what it is. So that uh, is uh, on indefinite hold as far as this board is concerned. Uh, secondly, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a request to postpone a couple of things, which we'll get to in a few minutes. But meanwhile, let me just go through the... Uh, procedure for this evening, and I'll start out by asking Mr. Stith of the Planning Department if he would explain the uh, participation by uh, people for the via the Zoom technology. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for those participating on the Zoom call, if you would like to make a comment during any of our public hearings tonight, um, please use the raised hand icon, and we will call on you and then allow you to speak and make your comments uh, for that public hearing. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take things in order on the agenda, and the first order of the business on the agenda this evening is approval of minutes. And before we go into that, let me just explain briefly the uh, <coughs> rules of the road, as it were, that we conduct, the, under which we conduct this uh, evening's business. Uh, when someone has a petition or a request or a case, however you want to phrase it, to present to the board, they'll come up state the name and address and uh, present and in 15 minutes or less uh, present the case. If 15 minutes is, seems to be insufficient, we ask that people request an additional five minutes before they begin speaking. That's just to keep everybody on the same page with, as, with respect to the length of uh, deliberation. Uh, after, the, after the board has ans asked any questions, if we have any, I'll ask for people to come up in order First, those who are in favor of the proposal, limited to five minutes. Secondly, those who are opposed to the proposal, limited to five minutes. And then the last call, which is two, for or against, if someone wishes just to address particular points but they're not arguing for or against it, they can come up at that time. And those comments are without limitation on time, except that we obviously ask people to be pertinent and as specific and as succinct as you can with, re with respect to the uh, comments that you have for the board. After that's all done, we'll close the public hearing and then we'll take a vote. And, that's, and the vote can be up, down, or up with stipulations, or postponement, which we try to, avo <laughs> which we try to avoid. So that's the, that's the procedure. And I'm going to ask Mr. Uh, <clears throat> No, no, I think no. I take that back. I'm going to go right to the uh, minutes, which is on the uh, agenda, and that the first set of minutes we have for us is for February 15th, one month ago. Uh, is there a motion or a comments with respect to the minutes? And specifically, does any have any any questions or any comments? Is something that needs to be changed? I, I have a comment about the first sentence. Thank, thank you, Mr. Rossi. Yes, I have a comment about the first sentence on page six. I think the indefinite article A should be replaced with the word no. Okay. Which which page you want again? Please six. 
Page six. Yep. Would you read it as you, as you think it should? She said it failed on a few things, including that there were no special conditions of the property that rendered that there was, and it says A, but I think it should say no fair and substantial relationship between the general public purpose of the uh, ordinance, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, thank you. Good catch. Anybody have any comments on that? Okay. <laughs> any Anything else from anybody? No? Is there a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended by that comment? So moved. Moved. Thank, thank you, Mr. Lee. A second to that motion, Mr. Rossi. Thank you. Those in favor, a voice vote will do. Please say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Then the second set of minutes is for the second meeting last month, which was February 23rd. Is there someone who has any comments or corrections or questions with respect to those minutes? Apparently. Apparently not. Oh. Okay. Is there a motion to approve them as uh, presented? Move thank, to approve. Thank you, Ms. Eldridge. Uh, second. second. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you. Anything else? Any further? Hearing none, again, a voice vote will do. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Done. All right. <clears throat> now. Oops. That takes care of the, those items on the agenda. We have a, another announcement this evening, which will catch some people by surprise, I'm sure. We have a request to postpone to next month the appeal of a planning board decision with respect to property at 1 Congress Street. There are two items on the agenda this evening with respect to 1 Congress Street. One is the request for a uh, for this board to overturn the a decision of the planning director. And the second one, if that, if that, depending on how that goes, there may or may not be a call for a uh, variance. So there's two, two items with respect to that particular project. And that's that's something. It's unfortunate. I, it came. This came late in. I'm, and if anyone has been really inconvenienced by that, I want to apologize. But that's that's the way these things go sometimes. So, any any questions? Any comments from the board on that? Okay. Does someone want to make so? It's it's a request to postpone. Does someone want to make an appeal with res, a motion? Excuse me. With respect to the first item which is the pe repeal of the administrative decision with respect to the height. So moved. Thank Ms. Margison, thank you. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Lee, thank you for the, this is the second. Uh, Ms. Margison, your, your motion, please. Uh, nothing really to add to it, just that uh, the applicant has asked for a continuance of the administrative appeal in this matter. I understand there's further discussions with legal over it, and it seems that a one-month appeal is merited. Yeah, it's the first, certainly the first time that that's been requested. Mr. Lee, anything further? Uh, nothing to add, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you. Uh, we'll do a roll call on this one. Uh, Mr. Rossi? Aye. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ms. Margerson? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Lee? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Mantle. Yes. Thank you. And vacancies can't vote, so they're off. Okay. And this, <laughs> the second one, as I, as I said a, mo a moment ago, is with the respect to the same property, and that is a request to, uh, for variances, if, if necessary, depending on how the first vote went. Uh, so that one is request for postponement also. Does someone have a request? A motion with respect to that request. Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd move we uh, grant that postponement as well. Thank you. Mr. Lee, thank you. Uh, is there a second to that motion to postpone? I'll second it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Raldish. And again, just for clarity, that's the postponement is until next month to the regular meeting of this board, the first, the first regular meeting of this board. Okay. We'll uh, take the vote uh, uh, by... Vote again in the uh, opposite direction, Mr. Mantle. 
Do you vote to yes. postpone? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McDonald? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Lee? Yes. Ms. Margeson? Yes. Ms. Ms. Eldridge? Yes. And, and Mr. Rossi? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that's post, that's both carried. So both those items are carried forward until next month. So moving, moving along to one we hope <clears throat> is not postponed. We have a issue, we have a request for 725 Colonial Drive. Get my sheet here, we can. This is an item of under, this is the first item under new business and it reads as follows. The request of Kelly Rose Shea owner for property located at 725 Colonial Drive, whereas relief is needed to demolish an existing garage and construct a new 24 by 28 foot addition with single car garage, which requires the following. One, variances from section 10.521 to allow a, a a five and a half foot right side yard where 10 feet is required. B, a 20 foot rear yard where 30 feet is required. And C, a 20 foot front yard where 30 feet is required. And D, a 25% building coverage where 20% is the maximum allowed. Secondly, a variance from section 10.321 to allow a non-conforming building or structure to be extended, reconstructed, or enlarged without conforming to the requirements of the ordinance. Said property is located on assessor map 260 as lot 14 and lies within the single residence B, SRB district. Who speaks in favor of this proposal, please? All right. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, my name is Nick Geist. I'm uh, Kelly Shea's uh, husband, uh, co-owner co -owner of the house at 725 Colonial. Um, where it's both our primary residence as well as our 14-month-old son, Wyatt. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll give you a little bit of background first. Uh, we bought the house in 2016, and uh, it was livable, but we, we've been working on it ever since, uh, bringing it up to date. Um, our latest project uh, with the with the birth of our new son, uh, we realized that kitchen space was getting a little tight. Uh, we, we haven't had a dishwasher since we moved in. Uh, there's no space for a formal dining room table. Uh, so me and my, uh, my father-in-law, Richard Shea, uh, we, were, we drew up a couple ideas to renovate our kitchen, but the same questions kept coming up. We still don't have a lot of space. And there were other issues like our garage, which is really only a garage in name. It's very small, it just doesn't even fit a car in it. And there's no access or egress to and from the house from it. Um, so we decided to start thinking outside the box, literally. And uh, tonight I am proposing a 24 by 28 addition um, where the existing breezeway and uh, garage are. We'll tear those down. <clears throat> Uh, we locate the main entrance of the house to the addition. Uh, right now, we just have concrete cast steps and you know, wrought iron railings uh, as the main entrance. We'd like to demolish that, uh, replace the door with a window, and like I said, relocate the main entrance to a 5 by 15 foot porch in front of the kitchen. Um, and then for the nitty gritty de details, um, the existing kitchen we'd like to convert into a third bedroom. Um, if or I should say when our family expands even more, we'll have more flexibility with the third bedroom. And that'll allow us for <coughs> more space for a pantry, a couple closets, and uh, the coat closet that's currently in the living room, we're, we'd like to um, merge with our master bedroom closet to give ourselves a big old uh, master closet. So to the variance, um, like, you, like you mentioned, uh, we're requesting a variance for the front rear and side setback, or the right side setback. Um, right now our setbacks are um, uh, 25 and 20 feet uh, front and rear respectively. Um, we're already on a non-conforming lot, um, so any, any changes we'd make would need a variance here. Um, and then as well as the variance for the garage on the right side against our neighbors to the right. Uh, I did talk to both my neighbors. Um, Angie on the right and Bob behind us, and I showed them the plans. I showed them what we were uh, suggesting we do, and they 
they seemed very happy to uh, see us adding on to the house. Um, in the in the examples I show in my uh, proposal, the two of those are actually both those neighbors. So. Uh, I understand that the board doesn't grant variances based on precedent, but there are the two the two houses that abut ours. Their garages are right on the property line, much closer than five and a half feet from what I'm asking. So beyond that, I'd just like to touch on the five points um, out of ten point two three three. The variance will not be contrary to the public interest. Um, like I said, there is precedent in Panaway Manor. A lot of the houses are on non-conforming lots. Um, and they've been renovated in a similar style to what we are proposing. Uh, we believe it will be aesthetically compatible with the neighborhood and um, will enhance rather than, than diminish the uh, properties of our neighbors. Um, with that, the spirit, the spirit of the ordinance will be observed. Um, we feel our requests are reasonable given the precedent set by numerous other properties in the neighborhood. The um, addition will line up with the existing house. Uh, the roof line will be at the same height, so it'll blend together as one dwelling. Us, substantial justice will be done. Um, I can safely say our family's quality of life will greatly grow from this addition. Um, like I mentioned before, our current garage doesn't provide access or egress to and from the house. This addition will provide that. Um, it's growing challenging to move our son in and out of cars, especially when the weather's foul. Um, and this, from a safety standpoint, it will be much easier to, to tackle the logistics of moving around a 14th month old. Um, as well as open up our house to uh, yeah, a bigger dining room, bigger kitchen. Um, I'll be able to host Thanksgiving and not be embarrassed by people sitting on the couch, that kind of thing. Um, and then the additional bedroom, like I said, when our family inevitably grows again, we'll have space for another bedroom. Values of, our, of surrounding properties will not be diminished. I'd argue the opposite. Uh, we're going to be dumping quite a bit of money into this addition, and it will certainly raise the value of our house, which I believe would, would uh, benefit the surrounding neighborhood. Um, like I said, there's been a lot of renovations in that neighborhood lately, uh, one of which was my, our grandfather, who lives at uh, 712 Colonial Drive, or no, I'm sorry, 412 Colonial Drive, a very similar addition to ours, added on a garage right off the side, and uh, his house looks great. Um, and then literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. Um, if, if this is, variance is denied, um, then we can't create more space. Um, like I said, our house is already within the allowable setbacks. It's of the, uh, of the uh, code. <coughs> um, so we wouldn't be able to add anything. We'd be back to square one, uh, renovating a kitchen with not a lot of room to work with. Um, like I said, with our house being on a non-conforming lot, any change to our footprint would require a variance any anyway. So in conclusion, um, this addition would greatly help our family and uh, help us continue to be happy residents of Portsmouth and especially Panaway Manor, uh, where we hope to grow our family even more over the coming years. Um, I'd like to thank the board again for your time and consideration in uh, reviewing this proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Before you leave, any questions from the board, Mr. Mantle? Yes, um, thank you. Um, very nice. I've noticed in the drawings that the current garage you're getting rid of. Yes. And building a new one on. Correct. Correct. Okay. What is the current, what is the setback currently for the, the garage that's right now? It's greater than 10 feet. I okay, it's around so you don't need a variance for that? Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That I was believe it. it's about 14 feet. Okay, thank you. And <clears throat> any, anybody else? Ms. Margeson? So I note that the this is a, a very small lot in comparison to what is the minimum allowed for the single residence fee, which is 15,000. But the, um, so I understand it's a tight space, but your right yard setback is going from 18 feet to 5.5. And that's a significant reduction. Um, and again, the building coverage is going from 17% to 25% when 20% is, percent is the maximum allowed. Um, <clears throat> and that again is a, you know, on such a small lot is such a significant, um, is such a significant increase. So in terms of the breezeway and the kitchen, expanded kitchen and the garage, what is really mostly accounting for that? 
increase in the building coverage? Well, both the uh, garage and the kitchen, they're both 14 by 24. So they're, I'd say they're, they're both equally contributing to that. We had bounced around ideas varying, varying the size of the kitchen, varying the size of the garage, trying to find a happy medium. Because like, of course, I don't want to be right up on, on the property line. Uh, there, is a privacy, <coughs> there is a privacy fence on that side, which helps with the barrier. Um, so that we, we felt that the uh, 24 by 28 was a good balance between what we're looking to accomplish from this uh, project and uh, observing the spirit of the ordinance. So the garage is bigger than the current garage? It is, yes. Okay. It'll be able to fit a, fit a car. And... Okay, thank you. With regard to, else? Uh, Mr. Rossi? Yes, yes, with regard to the uh, setback, it looks from the diagram, just correct me if I'm wrong on this, that on one side of the addition, you're almost at the 10 feet, and at the other side, like at the top there, you're just at about the 10 feet that that's required. So really the problem here is that the lot is angled, and that's why it goes down to five and a half feet. Correct. correct? Yeah, we're on, yeah, we're on the corner, and it is an abnormally, abnormally shaped lot. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any, <clears throat> excuse me. Any, anybody else? Anybody else on the board? Any more questions? No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone present who would like to speak in favor of this proposal, please? Please come up and give us your name and address if there is someone who wants to speak in favor. Seeing nobody, uh, is there anyone who wants to come up and speak in opposition to this uh, proposal? Any, anyone? Okay, last call, two for or against. Any speakers at all? Any speakers on this at all? Apparently not. Anybody on the Zoom? No one on the Zoom. No one on the Zoom, thank you. Okay. All right. What's your pleasure, board? Any comments or <coughs> a motion if someone is so inclined? My only comment is that I think the proposed uh, variances are absolutely in keeping with the intent of the ordinance and makes this uh, house more suitable as a single family uh, dwelling. Okay, I take, take that as a motion in favor as presented. Yes? Yes. Yes, thank you. Not, not to put words, no. <laughs> just, for, just for the record. <laughs> case, I'm, case I'm legal eagles read it or something. Okay. Yeah, yes, that's okay. right. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mantle. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Rossi, your, your motion, please. Okay. I move that the variance uh, is approved as requested. Uh, I do not think that granting the variance would be contrary to the public interest. Granting the variance would observe the spirit of the ordinance because it is designed uh, in this section to um, <clears throat> would uh, you know to encourage uh, single-family housing and uh, this project uh, makes the property more suitable for single-family use I do not see any uh, loss of uh, value or anything to the neighborhood uh, so I don't I do believe that substantial justice is served uh, and there is some unusual aspects of the property, notably the angled uh, side yard uh, that make the side yard clearance uh, more difficult to manage than it might ordinarily be on a rectangular lot. Thank you. Your second. Um, what Mr. Rossi said, um, it was a very good complete presentation. Uh, the requests um, are small, in my opinion, even for Panaway Manor. Uh, which practically every house there is non-conforming. So um, I will support the uh, motion. Thank you. Any, anything further from the board? Any last comments? Not. I'll, let's, the motion is to approve as presented. I'll start down the left with Mr. Rossi. Yes. Ms. Ms. Eldridge. Yes. Mr. Mar Ms. Margeson, excuse me. No. Mr. Lee. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Mantle. Yes. And I and the <coughs> Chair votes yes as well. Thank you very much. So we're done. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right. 
Moving right along to uh, the next item on the agenda. <clears throat> Since I can get my pile of paper shuffled here. <clears throat> next I item B on the agenda under new business this evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is the request of Christopher S. and Kristen L. Martin, owners, for property located at 27 Sewell Road, whereas relief is needed to construct a rear addition with two decks and a 10 by 10 foot shed, which requires the following. One, <coughs> excuse me, Vari <coughs> variances from section 10.521 to allow A, a six, six and a half foot left side yard where 10 feet is required and B, a 22% building coverage where 20% is the maximum allowed. Said property is located on assessor map 170 as lot 12 and lies within the single residence B, SRB district. Who uh, wants to present this to the board, please? Good evening. Good evening. Chris Martin. I'm here to speak on behalf of myself and my wife, Kristen Martin. This application was prompted, we did a, um, I'm a local builder based in Fort Smith. We did a major renovation on this house in 2018, which was designed by us before we had children. And now we have two kids running around and we are looking to add some more space um, to sprawl a little bit. We basically have one common room in the house that we're all uh, cohabiting together. Um, so the goal is to add a 22 by 24 addition uh, in the back of the house. That would allow us to, um, on the floor plans it shows, it allows us to have a, a kitchen and or dining room table, multi-use eating area uh, that kind of overflows into a living space. Right now we have just a kitchen and kind of a, a sitting area. So that would be the purpose of the addition. The two decks, this addition displaces the current deck that's right in the middle of the house. And so we we're hoping to add a deck on either side with an egress out to get kind of symmetrical flow to the use of the backyard and the play space for the kids. Um, the shed is crucial for us as well because we have everything that we would need to fit in a single bay garage plus our entire lives because we don't have a bulkhead to our unfinished basement. So it is very congested and we're hoping to get added space for lawnmowers, snowblowers, rakes, bikes, etc. cetera. Um, in essence, this proposal is to get more living space for our family and more usable um, storage as well. Uh, to jump into the five points, um, I'll, I'll add one more thing actually, uh, similar to the last application, the, the relief that we're looking for is the south side side yard setback. We are intending on keeping the same plane as the existing house, so we're not proposing to uh, encroach any more than the, the plane of the existing house, I guess. The lot is tapered, so where we have, I believe it's an eight foot setback on the house as the lot goes towards the backyard, um, that plane just, it, it, it crunches that dimension a little bit. And that's where the, it's actually 6.8, um, that side yard set, but uh, that's where we're asking for relief there. Um, the variance is not contract to public, uh, contrary to public interest. Um, we've talked to almost all of our neighbors, we, in this neighborhood, we have a lot of abutters. We share a fence with six other properties just because a lot of them corner out to our, our lot. We know them all well, we've talked to them all. Everyone is in support of this addition that we've spoken with. And um, I think that we are all in agreement that this will be aesthetically pleasing. And um, kind of jumping into the second category of the spirit of the ordin ordinance is observed, I think that there are many similar additions uh, in this neighborhood. Um, this, this, this style um, 
of a single story addition is very common in the surrounding properties. Um, substantial justice is done. Um, the purpose of this addition is, is just to get more living space um, for our family uh, as we continue to live and grow in this, in this neighborhood. Um, I believe that the surrounding properties it will not be diminished. I, I think that they'll be improved. I think this will improve home values in the neighborhood. Um, and the little, enforce, little enforcement of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. Um, this proposal, this layout, um, the flow of the addition is, it, it leans itself to have a deck on either side of it, and clearly that's what will, will put us over our lot coverage and is what is pushing us into that side setback request as well. Um, I think that, you know, if this was a more square lot, if this lot was 15,000 square feet, we would be under in both categories. Um, so I believe that this is a, a fair request. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Thank you. <clears throat> any questions from the board at this point? Any questions? No, apparently not. Thank you very much. <clears throat> is there anyone present who would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone in favor? Please come up. No? Seeing nobody? Okay. Anyone wishes to speak in opposition to this proposal? Anybody? Anybody? Zoom? No? Okay. At last call for speakers, two, for, or against. Anybody have anything to say at all to add to this proposal as presented? Uh, apparently not. Okay. Pub public hearing is closed. Thank you very much. What you, uh, does anyone have a comment on it, or perhaps, or perhaps a motion? Well, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> I just say I'd be supporting this application and a motion to to approve it. This seems pretty innocuous and pretty similar to the last one. Okay. One thing <clears throat> I'd comment that you know setbacks are uh, are there to ensure that. One of the things that there's access to the property from all sides for safety reasons for fire, ambulance, and that sort of thing. And this increase in setback or a decrease in setback actually is pretty innocuous. The lot coverage is fairly small, and uh, you know this is all being driven by a growing family. So I'd be in support of this this application. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Any is there a second to the to that motion to approve? I'll second it. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, <coughs> Ms. Myerson. Okay, Mr. Lee, you motion, or do you have any other further comments? Uh, that, well, that was more of a comment than a motion, but we can call it a motion if you'd like. Okay. So I just go through the criteria. All right. So I just take uh, the first two together. This variance is not contrary to the public interest, and it deserves the spirit of the ordinance. This has been driven by the needs of a growing family, <coughs> more space, and uh, you know certainly nothing that's proposed here would be contrary to the public interest and violate the spirit of the ordinance. Substantial justice is done here that there's no really any hardship done to the general public and the benefit to the applicant is not outweighed by any benefit to the general public. Certainly a, a well thought out and well constructed ad, addition to this property would not diminish any of the surrounding properties. To the contrary, it would probably enhance them. And literal enforcement of this ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. The uh, hardship here would be not the family not being able to meet the needs for space, the growing family. So for those reasons, I would uh, I would move that we approve this application as presented and advertised. Thank you, Ms. Marston. Um, my second is is that um, I do echo uh, Mr. Lee's comments that these setbacks are put in place for access for emergency vehicles and also for the movement of um, uh, air and, and light, uh, mm. which has been deemed important. So, you know, setbacks are not always de minimis. Um, unlike the last application, I find that this application is more suitable because the the setback um, the setback diminution on the left side is only 1.5 feet from what it is currently now. Um, this is a very large lot. I feel like it can accommodate that, and the building coverage is 2% over what is allowed by the ordinance, um, but it is, you know, an, SS, an increase in what it is existing, is existing um, building coverage is, is under what is allowed for the ordinance. So I don't believe that these variances uh, unduly 
uh, conflict with the purpose and spirit and intent of the ordinance. So I will be supporting it. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll be supporting it as well. Uh, anything on the Zoom, Mr. L Mr. Stiff? No. No, nobody. Okay. All right. Uh, any any further comments before we vote? If not. I'll t we'll ask I'll ask the Mr. Mantle to start the voting down at this end, please. Uh, the some... proposal is to approve as presented. Yes. Thank you. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Lee. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ms. Margerson. Yes. Ms. Eldridge yes. and Mr. Mr. Rossi. Yes. Thank you very much. And and the, yes. and I vote yes as well. Okay, you're you're approved. You're all set. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> all right. We have one recusal on the next. I, item here, Ms. Margerson. That's me. Thank you. That's right. Is that still a recusal? <coughs> yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> the next uh, item on the agenda is for 189 Gate Street. And the, get my script here. <coughs> and the, uh, Item reads as follows. The request of, and please correct my pronunciation of names or any other words that I mispronounce. The request of Nerdbone Family Revocable Trust Owner for property located at 189 Gates Street, whereas relief is needed for conversion of the existing garage into a garden cottage with a 12 by 16 foot addition and a 6 by 14 foot deck, which requires the following. One. Variances from section 10.521 to allow A, 35.5% building coverage where 30% is the maximum allowed, and B, a one foot right side yard where 10 feet is the minimum. Secondly, a variance from section 10.321 to allow a non conforming building or structure to be extended, reconstructed, or enlarged without conforming to the requirements of the ordinance. Said property is located on assessor map 103 as lot six and lies within the general residence B, GRB, and historic districts. Who, who wishes to present this case to the board, please? Your name and your name and address, if you would. Kelly Sanders, 189 8th Street. Uh, I'm just gonna start and then um, Ann is gonna take over. So uh, I'm Pat and Judy Nurbin's daughter. Uh, I recently took an early retirement, retirement and I'm residing at my parents' home at 189 Gate Street because my father has Alzheimer's disease. He currently needs supervision. My parents are requesting this variance to convert their garage <clears throat> into a garden cottage for family or caregivers so they can age in their home. I'd like to highlight a few key points regarding our request. Um, my father's neurologist, Dr. Kent Logan, wrote a letter speaking to my dad's Alzheimer's diagnosis. He highlighted how important it is to provide a secure family home environment with family and friends nearby, which remarkably reduces the likelihood of the symptoms um, of Alzheimer's that my father's facing. This plan would allow our family to provide support for both my parents as they age and need more significant care. Additionally, Nancy Eichner, an elder care professional with years of experience, wrote in a letter um, of supporting the plan. She's the president of the Seacoast Village Project, a local nonprofit organization that provides, um, that promotes aging in place and provides resources to aging Seacoast residents. She knows my parents and she stressed the importance of a plan that provides a close and affordable living space for family members or caregivers. Uh, I believe you have copies of both of those letters. Uh, and then the third point I wanted to make was that my parents have done extensive research and planning regarding this next phase of their life. They looked at options for moving to a different home situation. They looked carefully at the costs associated with round the clock in home care for two retired teachers on a fixed income. They also investigated different options for building something on their property. They consulted experts, including several people in the city planning department to see what would be most feasible for their property. 
and that's how uh, we landed here with this plan this evening. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time and consideration of this plan uh, that will allow our family to support my parents' desire to age in their home and community that they love so much. And I'm gonna ask um, Ann to now come to speak specifically about the plan. Good evening, uh, Ann Whitney, I'm the architect for the project. Good evening. Um, before we get started, um, we've made a revision. Um, we got feedback and then from the uh, closest abutter uh, on Monday and I took a look at it and I, the, I've got uh, copies of the revision here and I would um, like to hand those out. Um, I talked extensively with Peter and, you know, we're asking for less, less nonconformity, so we thought we would be able to, um, to present this tonight. We can, we can pass them down. Thank you. I think I've seen these, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, and I also have an additional a butter letter. Start down there. Thanks. Copy? Yes. Yep. Okay, so um, this revised plan, um, there were some concerns about how close um, the addition was to the property line. Um, you know, anything adding on to that back of that garage would, would definitely be non conforming. And also the size of it. So, what I've done with this plan is uh, Shift the shift the addition away from the property line and downsize it. So we're ending up with a ten and a half by fourteen and a half addition instead of a twelve by sixteen addition, which pushes that side setback to four feet as opposed to just over one foot. Um, and then downsize the deck, you know, in addition to that. Um, I think if you go to page two of three, you get a better sense. Um, well, actually, let's look at that site plan for a bit. Um, there are not a lot of options to be able to, you know, add other structures on this property. We're abutting the uh, Pony Graves um, Cemetery, which has a 25-foot setback, which is also the, you know, zoning setback, but it's one of those that you can't get any um, relief from of the proximity to the cemetery and the existing driveway and then the yard area it just would be um, really difficult to uh, costly to you know try to put a structure in the in the yard which would also not be all that conducive to the neighborhood in terms of views and things um, so you know when they were talking with the city they they, they have this garage um, that's in good condition and the idea of adding a small addition to that um, seemed to make sense to be able to get um, just a little over this new plans a little over 500 square feet for a, a living space um, on the property we go to the and also on that revised plan I've dashed in the location of the uh, of our original proposal so you can compare that You go to the second page, um, shows that elevation that's um, against the property line. Because we're changing the use, um, the existing garage, that wall would have to be, uh, we'd have to reside it and uh, make that a one hour firewall so that would take care of any sort of fire concerns. Um, I'm <coughs> showing the addition with a possible um, transom window that, that 
that doesn't have to be there. There was some concern about just looking at a blank wall, and I thought that might break the wall up a little bit. And then, um, so that steps back. The height, um, Portsmouth measures building height to the middle of the, of the gable. Um, so the height of the garage, at sort of the worst case scenario is a little plus or minus 18 feet. The height to the peak is um, 22.5. The addition's uh, 15 and a half feet high at the worst case, and the height to the to the absolute peak is around 18 feet. So it's not a super tall addition. Um, as you can see from that view of the point of graves, um, right now that um, back of that garage is pretty much a blank wall. And what I think I tried to do with the addition, I think if you go to the next page, is to put an addition on there that would uh, break that wall up a bit. And if you go to page three of three, the rear elevation, you can see it shifted over. And I reduced the pitch to minimize the height so it's not matching the pitch of the existing garage. So we're feeling like this is a, a small addition um, and is in keeping with um, keeping with you know the scale of things if you look at that um, on page three of three point of graves almost all the buildings there have additions fairly tall um, uh, existing structures and then with the additions that step down towards the rear yard. Yeah. Get my criteria here, sorry. <laughs> So our, um, there was a revision from uh, that Peter caught from my original proposal because I had this, the ex existing house has got these really high brick walls that are stick out from the foundation and I'd included those as building coverage and he didn't think we needed to do that. So um, right now with this new plan, we're at a building coverage of 32.5% where 30% is allowed and a right side setback of four feet where 10 feet is required. Um, again, the existing garage is non-conforming on that right side property line and so any addition would probably be requiring side yard setback. This is our first step in this process because we need to get a CUP um, approval and we're gonna be requesting a waiver because uh, for garden cottages, you're not supposed to be adding on to the existing structure. So we have some hurdles to do with this. Um, and tonight we're, the process is to do the variances um, first and then we um, will be going to the planning board after that. Um, variances are not in contrary to the public interest that many properties in this neighborhood are non-conforming to building areas and setbacks. Um, public view of this structure from the point of graves, I think, um, will be enhanced by this small addition, kind of breaking up that blank wall. And the variances are consistent with the spirit of the ordinance that allow this allowed change in use with the addition, which is in context of the neighborhood. And that's more, the addition is in context with the neighborhood. We're not really talking about the use here, even though we are changing the use. Substantial justice will be done as this work will allow the owners to add this dwelling unit for family and or live in help without adversely affecting adjacent properties. Um, we feel that, you know, given the nature of this neighborhood where everybody's pretty close together, this small addition isn't gonna drastically, I guess the, the hardship to the Nurbins is, is greater than the small, the, what this small addition would do to the abutting property. And I know we, there's a disagreement about that and you'll be hearing that, <laughs> but that is our feeling. Um, the variances will not diminish the value of surrounding properties. Um, I don't see that. Um, properties in this area are extremely hot these days and, you know, an attractive addition on a property isn't really gonna to change 
change the value of it. <clears throat> and the special condition of this property is the non-conforming conformity of the existing garage. Um, are there any questions? Anything at this point? No? All right, thank you. Thank you. I think Ms. No. Oh, Ms. McDonald, sorry. Just one. There's, there seems to have been um, quite a bit of public comment. All yes. Of, all of it favorable. That All of it that I read was yes. favorable. And I um, think there'll be some people speaking here tonight. Yeah. Have, have, have you had anyone raise objection? Yes. The, um, the immediate abutter who's most affected by this has raised an objection. And we started, uh, the Nurban started trying to communicate with them on February 22nd when I had the plans done with the original. And then uh, this Monday is when we finally got the letter from them requesting um, that they were um, not happy with the project. And that's when I, you know, quickly tried to make a compromise and, you know, do this revision. So you've been through some negotiation with them? What's that? You've been through some negotiation with them. Some, um, but uh, they are still opposed, and you'll be hearing from them tonight. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And you, you, sh you do have a letter in your packet, their letter in their, your packet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question for you. How necessary is the deck to this project? To it's not completely, and we, we would be willing to let go of that. Um, I think the importance is, as Kelly eloquently said, is they're trying to solve a problem. And I know, you know, once a garden cottage is there, it's, you know, there for perpetuity. But in this case, these um, are residents. I did the original project back in 1998, and they really, you know, love this neighborhood and have been here for 22 years. And I would like to continue to be here. And we sort of see this as a path for them to be able to stay. If the deck wasn't there, would you be in conformance with the building coverage? Uh, I think we'd be still a little bit over. I could run that calculation. It would be, it would be 30.8%. 30.8, so it would be we, just, we, yeah. 1% over. Essentially. Thank you. Yep. Well, while we're on that subject, what is the, I, I can't pick out revised uh, deck dimensions as, as proposed right at this point. It, oh, it's on the floor plan on the second page. It's um, six feet by 13 foot six. It comes in six inches on either side. Okay. All right. On the second sheet, two of three. Oh, I see. Six, okay, yeah, all right, okay, yeah. <clears throat> six by 13. And six. there are no steps to grade. Um, six by we 13. thought about that, but then it was getting in trouble with the setback with the, um, for the point of grade setback, so. It's not essential to have steps down from a deck. It would just be a little out, tiny bit of outdoor space. But again, they are willing to let go of that if it's going to block the entire project. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other qu questions from the board at this point? No. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> who, is, who is present who would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone? In, please please come up. And if there's several, make would you make a line, please? And, and when you do come up, we ask that you give your name and address, if you would. Good evening. My name is Linda McVeigh, and I live at 42 Hunking Street. I'm not in the butter, but I'm in the neighborhood. I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the petition by the Nurborn family to modify their garage to be an unattached dwelling. We live in the neighborhood that has a high number of older families. The biggest concern facing older families today is to be able to age in place. Many of us have lived in the South End for years and fear having to leave our homes if we or our partners become ill. I faced that two years ago I applied to build an addition onto my house to accommodate my husband who had become very ill. We were granted permission to build the addition and we were grateful every day until my husband died that we didn't have to sell our home at such a difficult time in our lives. We felt supported by our neighbors and our community. 
This situation is one that eventually we will all have to face. The nerve are asking to modify an existing structure. It's an improvement that will add value to their property and therefore add value to the neighborhood. The modification will the family to age in place. It's my hope that allowing them to make this modification will show how our community cares for our older citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to speak in favor, please? Hello. My name is Carol Burke. I'm one seven Mechanic Street. I'm here to support the petition of Judy and Pat Nurburn. Although we are not direct butters, we have been through the board process ourselves a few times and watched many neighbors go through it. So we certainly understand what they're going through. Um, we hope this will enable the Nurburns to stay in their home. Pat and Judy are the type of neighbors that anyone would love to have. They're involved in many committees and events and they lend a helping hand wherever it's needed. The rationale for their request is not unusual. The <coughs> addition was approved for a similar house, which Linda just mentioned on Hunking Street, um, in similar circumstances, and there will likely be more as we all desire to age in place. The south end itself is notoriously tight, and many of the houses don't currently conform to the zoning ordi or ordinance. Um, with that in mind, I sincerely hope that this project can get the necessary accommodations to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. And next, please. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Pete Morin. I reside at 170 Mechanic Street with Carol. And I just, it was interesting because the two applicants prior to were talking about bringing their children into the world and into the houses and making it larger so that it could accommodate them. <clears throat> when I moved here 30 some odd years ago, I spent zero amount of time thinking about being here 30 years later and thinking about living in place and staying in my home. And <clears throat> here I am today, uh, surrounded by this type of environment. And I'm just hoping that we can, because we're looking to do the same as what the applicants are doing and several others in our neighborhood. It is a neighborhood and it's tough to, you know, find accommodations that you can stay in place and be there for the duration. And that's the hope that I think most of us want. So I fully support this. Thank you. Anybody next? Anybody next in favor? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Emily Hefner, and I live at 213 Gate Street. And while we're not immediately next to the Nurbans, we are next to Devin and James. Excuse me, could you speak into the bit, microphone a little, little bit? bit? Okay. We're at 213 Gate Street, thank, thank and you. we're not immediately next to Judy and Pat Nurbin, but we are next to Devin and James and we are very much in support of them being able to make accommodations to age in place. We're not directly impacted by the new proposal. We're, we're hopeful that something can be worked out. We do know that this is going to be a great addition to the neighborhood because we have young and aging in place. It really will be vibrant to have a nice looking place coming from Prescott Park to see the back of it. We're excited that you're going to take the minute to look at this and make a good decision. Thank you. Thank you. Next in, next, in, next in favor, please. My name is Kathleen Logan, 21 Blossom Street. I am not in the butter. I'm friends with the Nearborns. What I'd like to say is 18 years ago, my family went through something very similar. My husband has a disability, and we came before the board to request variances in order to make our home livable for him. Unfortunately, we had a very difficult experience. Ultimately, we were able to do the renovations needed, and we're still in the home, and it is working well for us. I, I know from experience that living with a disability is very difficult in a place like the South End with all these old homes. And I would like to think that 18 years after we went through our ordeal that the city will be a little more enlightened and will do everything possible to, to make reason to, to be reasonable to help these people stay in their homes thank you very much thank you 
Next, next in favor. Any next? Anybody? Last, last call for those who wish to speak in favor. Okay. Any anybody, Mr. Ziff? No one on Zoom. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> anybody? Anybody wish to come up and speak in opposition? Anybody? Not? Yes. Please come up. Good evening, members of the board. Eric Mayer, Donahue, Tucker, and Chindella. Can you folks all hear me fine? Good evening. Good yep. evening. I'm here on behalf of uh, Devin Quinn and James Butler. They are the residents that live at 199 Gate Street, which is the property that's immediately adjacent to the, proposed, the uh, subject lot located at tax map 103, lot 7. Um, as indicated, they are, they are here tonight to speak in opposition. Um, the uh, Devin and James don't do that lightly. We've, we've heard folks speak to um, the Nurbans being fantastic neighbors. They agree with that sentiment. And that's why this is a very difficult decision for them to make. Um, but they believe, and while they're sympathetic to uh, the need for this uh, addition onto their and conversion of their uh, garage, they believe that um, with every use, it needs to be properly sited and properly designed, and that there are viable alternatives that would be less adverse to their, um, to their property. Uh, Devin and James moved to the neighborhood uh, in May of 2020. When they moved here, they made a substantial investment. They're newlyweds. They want to start a family. They chose Portsmouth specifically to start that family. They chose, they, they searched for months for the perfect property saying no to many opportunities because they wanted to find the perfect place to raise their children. The 199 Gate Street is that place to them. It is unique in that it is located um, close to downtown, near parks, but it's truly unique in the fact that it has an open backyard perfect for children to play and to raise a family. When they purchased the property, they made a substantial investment of $30,000 to improve the backyard for that purpose. They sodded the backyard. They installed a French drain to address drainage issues. They installed a, a small patio made out of pervious pavers, all with the idea of improving this lot for their family. The proposed um, addition and expansion of this garage, even as modified, uh, undermines those investments and undermines their intended use and the value of their property. We believe that the ZBA, for that reason, should deny the relief that's being sought, or in the alternative, um, insist that the applicants agree to a continuance so that a more viable and agreeable solution can be worked out. Uh, I'll address the specific concerns in the context of the required relief under the zoning ordinance. And uh, there was a statement earlier that they didn't um, that the James and Devin somehow slept on the plans. They received, they uh, had been trying to touch base and get in contact with the Nurbans. They were able to do so on March 7th. That's when they first saw the plans. They reached out and spoke to them about their concerns on Sunday. They received these revised designs on Monday. It didn't address their concerns. They had suggested that the Nurbans uh, continue the application so they can could continue to collaborate. But uh, alas, we're here tonight. Um, there are four overarching concerns that the, that the uh, Devin and James have. Um, turning first to the um, first two criteria in the zoning ordinance, which is, is it uh, consistent with the spirit and intent of the ordinance? And would it be contrary to the public interest? The Supreme Court in this Harborside case recommended that those two criteria be considered together. And they have suggested uh, considering whether to a marked degree the proposed the proposal would be contrary to the ordinance here we believe that it would the topography of this of this lot of the Nurbans property um, drops as you proceed to the rear there's actually also a shelf so that it drops even further as you approach uh, Devin and James's property so that the existing height of the uh, garage while it might be uh, roughly um, the foundation is four feet from grade. It's, it's actually higher when you're on the Devin and James's property. That garage is actually above you a little bit more than what the grade would reflect in the plans. 
extending that by a measure of 10 feet means that that exposed, that exposed foundation is also going to be exposed well above six feet by the time you get that to the rear portion of their lot. This 18 foot, I believe it was represented that it would be 18 feet at its peak, that means you're going to have a 10 foot addition, 18 feet high, going into their backyard, no, no further than four feet from their property line. It is going to be a very large structure. It is going to drastically diminish the air and light that that property affords. And it's also going to cause drainage issues. Setbacks exist for a reason. Setbacks exist to ensure adequate light and space is provided. This is contrary to that by invading that the available air and light that is on Devin and James's property to a considerable degree. With regard to the uh, lot coverage, lot coverage uh, restrictions exist in order to ensure that there's enough, um, there, there's a limit on pervious coverage to ensure that there's a place for the stormwater runoff to go. That garage, because of where it's located, the drip edges are either on or over the property line. That means they're already getting a significant amount of water runoff from the, from the existing garage on their property. I've already, told, I've already said that they've already invested in a French drain, and while that's mitigate, mitigated some of the drainage issues, it hasn't solved them. But this proposal adds an additional amount of surface area coming off of the back of that garage and an additional, additional amount of roof, which is pitched directly toward their property. Now, there's no proposal as to how to manage the, that water that's going to be coming off, and it will lead to increase because you're increasing the lot coverage, because you're increasing the impervious cover you're going to be increasing the drainage issues that are on my client's property. For those two reasons, we believe that it's both contrary to the spirit and intent of the ordinance, as well as um, contrary to the public interest. I will note um, that in addition that garden cottages, as was, has already been indicated, they're supposed to be built within the confines of existing structures. The zoning ordinance makes very clear that only two expansions are permitted without modification from the planning board. One is a 50-foot entrance or up to a 300-square-foot deck. The ordinance doesn't allow for a modification to allow for an expansion of the footprint under other circumstances, such as this, which is to add effectively a living room onto an existing garage. So we believe in additional ways that this proposal is contrary to the spirit and intent of the ordinance. This is, in, a, in actuality, a garden cottage that's, um, excuse me, a, a detached ADU that's masquerading as a garden cottage. However, what they're trying to do by presenting this as a garden cottage is get around the various restrictions that exist for detached ADUs, one of which is the requirement for them to have a certain amount of lot size because um, if it were considered deta a detached ADU, they would have to have a significant, they would need an additional variance from the lot size requirement under the ordinance. Um, turning to the substantial justice criteria, the, the test is whether the benefit to be gained by the public in the denial of the variance is outweighed by the, by the um, loss that would be suffered by the applicant in the denial of the variance. Here we believe that alternatives do exist and can exist and can be worked out between Devin and James and the Nurbans. But we believe as presented, they would stand to lose significantly. And because their alternatives exist, a denial of this variance tonight will not jeopardize them in their ability to go back to the drawing board and submit something that's more palatable. I will note if you look at the, the assessing card for this property, it has 3,200 square feet of gross space, only 18 of which is living space. I haven't heard any suggestion as to why a, the existing dwelling, uh, pr principal dwelling could not be expanded with an addition, which would not affect um, Devin and James quite so significantly, or why some of the other additional space in the pri primary dwelling cannot be converted to accommodate an, an attached accessory dwelling unit. We also believe for these reasons that there will be a significant diminution of, of value associated with this uh, proposal. Um, in fact, Evan and James, when they first got the plans last week, they reached out to um, real estate professionals. They were not able to get an opinion in time for tonight's hearing, 
Um, but one appraiser commented, I don't even know where I would start valuing the, the diminution of value because this proposal is so unique. And the reason why it's unique is that there are very few detached or garden cottages located in quite so close a proximity to existing abutting dwellings. This is not an, uh, an addition onto an existing primary use. This is establishing a separate prince, uh, dwelling on the property in, a, in an outbuilding effectively. If you look at the neighborhood, there's not a lot of those, not, and particularly there's not a lot that's quite so close to abutting properties. Again, the, this is going to be located pr approximately within 10 feet of Devin and James's home. Uh, turning to little, literal enforcement. Yes. Uh, we, when we started, I said five minutes. Am I over? Well over. All right. Can so I get one more minute to wrap it up? Wrap it up very quickly. You got it. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it. And turning lastly to the literal, literal enforcement of the ordinance, we do not believe that there are any special circumstances of this property. A lot of the lots in this, almost all the lots in this neighborhood are, sub, uh, are subsized. Um, there, there's, all, there's restrictions on all of them. We believe that that the, the that these are um, that there's nothing particularly special uh, in terms of the conditions of the property, and we believe that for the reasons previously stated, that this is contrary to the spirit and intent, and because there are other alternatives available, that this is um, not a reasonable use, particularly in light of the harm that it stands to um, impose on my clients. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Are there other <clears throat> are there other speakers in opposition at this point? Yes, uh, your name and address, please. Names. <laughs> Hi. Um, thank you to the board. Um, I'm Devin Quinn, and this is my spouse, James Butler. And your, and your address, please. 199 Gate Street. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I live at 199 Gate Street, right next to the Nurbans at 189 Gate Street. Um, this is our first time in front of a, a ZBA, uh, which is why we sought counsel to help us navigate all this. But. We're going to try to stick to the timeline. Let us know if we do anything wrong. Um, we're here in opposition to the proposal at 189 Gate Street and want to explain our human aspect or human impact on us with concerns to the proposal as it is. Um, I grew up in Hampstead, New Hampshire. James grew up in Ohio. Um, I actually lived on Badger's Island 10 years ago above Badger's Island Pizzeria. Uh, I always knew I wanted to come back and settle down in Portsmouth, and luckily James agreed. And um, when we were ready year. Uh, we went to 30 homes. We finally found a home on Gate Street and closed on May 2020. Um, as Eric mentioned, we're newlyweds. Um, we put off our wedding, but we look forward to raising a family in our home. Um, we fell in love with our neighborhood because we could walk our future family or kids to many wonderful Portsmouth resources and activities. in this particular location because it really is um, does offer a lot of privacy um, compared to a very dense neighborhood. We have driveways on either side of our house which give us some buffer for noise um, and the backyard has open air and light and is moderately private. Um, if it were not for this backyard and the light and air that it offers, we wouldn't have made the considerable investment we did in purchasing it. Um, Eric mentioned we uh, uh, added a, an investment in putting grass down. Um, a small garden, maybe in the future a swing set. Um, for, I, uh, for us, this community is, and this neighborhood is ideal for a young family. Uh, I think we're the only other family with, young, with kids in the neighborhood. Um, we'd be the second one. Um, and we value this neighborhood precisely because of the d diversity of ages. Um, we have great relationships with our neighbors, um, especially including Pat and Judy. Um, and we want them to be able to age in place in their home, um, just like all of our other neighbors. Um, we mean that sincerely. In fact, it's very much in our, in our interest to do all we can to keep them uh, as neighbors, um, because they are a huge part of our community and our uh, street. Um, but we can't support this particular proposal. Um, the garage currently sits exactly at the property line, as in we use the garage wall as our property line. Um, our home is uh, 11 feet from the property line. Uh, this proposal turns the gar their garage, which is a buffer of space and privacy between our homes, um, into a dwelling unit. Um, increases the noise next to our home, increases the likelihood our neighbors will hear us, limiting the privacy we invested in. Um, the addition continues the building right along the property line. Um, 
and allows less, I'm sorry, this is written um, for the original proposal. It was less than two feet, now less than four feet from our property line. Uh, because our backyards slope away from the houses, uh, from the house and garage, the foundation of the addition will add additional height to the building. As explained, um, that building will block sunlight, airflow, and make us feel like we're kind of penned in in our backyard. Kind of, you know, we specifically chose Portsmouth because it's not, you know, Boston, and your backyard isn't with with buildings right up against your property line. Uh, the plan for the deck. Um, takes that further and further encroaches on the property line when it could go to the west, it could go uh, closer to the existing deck. Um, this deck, um, and this is a huge concern for us, this deck will sit many feet above our yard and will result in the folks on the um, deck looking down into my backyard from only a few feet away. Um, this is very uncomfortable for me, um, thinking about having kids um, being watched from above, so close to the property line. Um, and while the Nurbans are excellent neighbors, and Kelly, who lives there now, is an excellent neighbor, we're not, uh, we were planning for the long future here, knowing that um, they could sell this property to someone who um, is not as wonderful of neighbors that they are. Um, and they could rent that new dwelling to different tourists every weekend. And now I'm thinking about how what weekend tourists would be like to have, you know, above and a few feet looking down into my kids playing. Um, the stairs also extend even further, um, also on our pro right next to the property line. Um, that's not, um, they even have the stairs walking out towards our property where they could be on the other side. Um, if this proposal is passed as it is and the building is built, um, we probably wouldn't use our property the way we intend to use it now. Um, I would strongly consider moving to a more family-friendly property and backyard, um, and we, we did let the Nurbans know this. Uh, if we had to sell, I can imagine that other families with kids or other potential buyers who care about a backyard would also be turned off by the lack of privacy and be less interested in the home, devaluing our biggest family asset. Um, we do see mother and many other options to the Nurbans to build exactly what they need to help them stay in place, um, which we want to support as well in a location in a local their property that doesn't harm us like the current proposal. Um, is that an addition to the house? Is that uh, an ADU in place of the deck? Is it an ADU behind their home on the rest of their backyard? Um, is it a garden house with a, a deck south or west towards their own home rather than along? perhaps a garden cottage that's looked at the existing structure. There, um, these are all suggestions we, we did make to the Nurbans, uh, and we, we did ask, we, and, you know, that takes time to consider, and so we had um, hopes that they would request a continuance so we could continue talking about this. We um, didn't want to be here tonight or submit this letter. Um, we really appreciate them neighbors um, as neighbors and hopefully we in good, good faith, find a solution that works for both of us. We ask that you consider the impacts of this addition and how the impact it has on our family, um, our home, and our property value. Um, we don't see a denial of this plan as a denial of their opportunity to age in place, but an honest assessment that other plans can be found to accommodate both the Nurbans and our family. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, All right. I have a question, Arthur. <clears throat> I actually have some. Photographs that may pro just provide some context as to the impact. Okay, sure. Start them down there, please. I have a question. Uh, I've also included in uh, we'll just give them all to him. Yeah, just just give them all. We'll pass them down. Yeah. yeah. Also an area photo of the yeah. Any any questions from the board at this point? I have one. Mr. Lee. So could you put uh, the plan three with the photograph of the back of the house? Up? Peter, please. Page three. Got a, ma'am, on that on that photograph there, which which is your house in that picture? The yellow one on the, the left. One? Yep. Okay, that's, that's what I thought. Thank you. Oh, I thought it was going to be a harder question. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned um, something about short-term rentals, like weekend tours, things like that. Uh, it's not allowed. Yes. It's only allowed in the downtown overlay district, so. That doesn't happen. Yeah. 
And if it does, you call the city. And uh, I think we would be very supportive of, of long-term rentals. I think that's good for our community. Okay. Any? <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there other... Are there other speakers who wish to speak in opposition? Anyone, anyone else? Anyone else who hasn't spoken already? Mr. Mr. Sithen? No, no one on the Zoom call. No one on the Zoom call. Someone's right. coming. Come, yep, come up. And your name and address, please, if you would. <clears throat> so my name's Joanne Wolf. I live at 213 Gate Street. So this is the sec section that's neither for or against, right? No. <laughs> okay. Not yet. Okay. Stand, stand by. Oh, you, not yet. Okay. Stand by. You're still waiting for against. Okay. <laughs> last, call, last call for speakers in opposition, then we're going to go to too far and against. You, too far and against, you're on. So, <laughs> so I've lived in the neighborhood for um, about four and a half years, and everything that um, other speakers have talked about, about the Nurbans, is absolutely true. They're vital um, residents of the neighborhood. On the other hand, I've gotten to know James and Devin, and so my hope is that something can be worked out that's satisfactory to both of them, and that if that means a continuance or whatever is the, this word does, I, I would be hope, hopeful that it doesn't divide the neighbors. Thank, thank you very much. Next, next speaker, two for or against? I just want to yes, please. A couple things. Certainly. Um, first of all, we, as we mentioned before, we can uh, get rid of the deck, and that takes care of one uh, item um, of the deck overlooking the back of their property. Um, in terms of drainage, um, we could be happy to have a stipulation that um, we'd be guttering those, both those gable ends, and they would be directed um, either to like a rain garden or a dry well, or at, at minimal onto the onto the Nurban property and dealt with there. And I think um, that's not a huge amount of roof to divert, and most of it's already there. Um, also, in terms of the scale of this, um, and, you know, taking away the use of their backyard, you know, this addition lines up with the edge of their stairway. And there's just a small part of the yard, which is about 10 foot 10, that's directly impacted by any like light and air, or, you know. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that it's just it's it's a pretty small addition that we're requesting. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yep. Any? Okay. Two for against speakers. More? Any more? Last. This is last. Last call. If you have any, if you're tempted, come on up. If not, no, no more two, no more speakers, no more uh, Zoom call cleared. Okay. The public hearing is closed. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody on the board want to begin the begin the conversation? I got a question for Peter. Sure. Certainly. Um, this is an ongoing ADU application, correct? Correct. So after they leave here, it will go back to the planning board. Well, yeah, it hasn't gone to the planning board yet, but it will. If it okay. gets past this board, then it will go to the planning board. And additions, changes, modifications are all part of the ADU CUP process as well. The planning board can add any stipulation they so choose. Correct. Thank you. So, anybody else, Mr. I, I, Mr. Lee? I have a comment. I'd like to speak to the uh, the assertion that there be a demutation in value in value of this thing. <clears throat> I can give you a professional opinion as a real estate broker of forty plus years. I, I cannot fathom that adding a small addition to this garage would in any way diminish the value of any of the properties there. In looking at the picture, the applicant's house is to the left, the yellow house, which I asked Peter to put a a picture of there's a clear sight line from Point of Graves into that backyard. Uh, it you know bumping out the uh, the garage ten feet or whatever the the thing is. Yeah, it, it there's more more building to look at there. But as far as diminishing the value of that and surrounding properties, I, in my opinion, that won't be happening. Okay, thank you. Any 
Next, another uh, comment? Would make, Mr. Rossi? Uh, I'd like to make a comment that uh, I am uh, impressed with the applicant's uh, willingness to be flexible and uh, meet, reach reasonable accommodations with the revised plan that was submitted to us tonight. All right. Uh, anybody? Anybody else? Ms. 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 Elvis, yeah, looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems to me that the relief that's being asked here, particularly with the new plan, is very, very small. Um, the, the building coverage is less than 1% over the allowed. And the four feet while it's quite a bit less than 10, it's a lot more than zero. And the willingness to do away with the deck, which seems to be a big sticking point, although height is not a problem, you would be perfectly allowed to, to build something of that height, makes me think that, that this is something that I could approve. And really, one of the most important things that I heard is that the back addition will go no further than the steps, which leaves a backyard of about 35 or 40 feet to the point of graves. Mm -hmm. 30 feet. That's a big backyard um, with lots of open air and light. And I, I just, I don't see that this diminishes their ability to use the yard, particularly without the deck, which I know was very problematic. Um, so I would be inclined to vote for it. However, I am not completely convinced that there's a hardship here, that there isn't another place that this could be. And so I would like to hear from my fellow board members, because I don't know how to do that part of the <clears throat> yes, thank you. Mr. Lee? Oh, oh Mr. McDonald. Yeah. Your I'd turn. like to Your turn. just reply and maybe add, add on a little bit to what Ms. Elder just said. Um, what has been presented to the board tonight is a, a picture of conflicting interests. There's one party that has a young midlife interest and there is another party that has an end-of-life interest. Those two interests are in conflict. And my belief is that the Zoning Board of Adjustment was not ever designed, commissioned, or operated to be the King Solomon who decides between competing interests of that kind. Um, so I would like to find a way to propose that we do not take a position, we do not force a winner-loser situation out of this, and what we do is require the parties to go away, negotiate, reach a conclusion, and come back to us. So that is my, that is my feeling. You can... Uh Make it would have to be a motion to uh, postpone for a particular reason, which would be <clears throat> for more inf one one reason you can po propose a postponement is for additional information presented to the board, which is what your our proposals what what you're talking about. I think um, that's that's one legitimate reason for a, post a postponement and rehearing. What I'm really talking about is that this. A case and the uh, parties to it have wound up in a zone that is not the purview of this of this board. Yeah, uh, that's that's we don't have that authority <clears throat> to just say we don't want to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unlike uh, unlike courts, which can do that <laughs> and do. Can I say one thing here? No, um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, we're, we're close. Um, so, may I uh, offer a motion? Please do. Uh, I move that we advise the applicants that the 
petition that they have presented to us is not really actionable and that they should withdraw this application? Can't do that. We, we, have to, we have to take some kind of a positive action, even if it's only to Approved postpone for further the table. Right, ex exactly. Right. Then we postpone a decision until till such time that the parties have brought us <clears throat> uh, information that is zoning issues. Well, we can, we can postpone it for further information. That, that's just everybody understands what that means. Till, till next month. Okay. Is that your – okay, because I think we've heard – I think I can support that. We've, I think we've heard enough to realize that there may be some opportunities here. Uh, is there a second to that? Let's no. see if there's a second to that motion. Um, I'll second for discussion. Thank, thank you. Is there criteria – and this is probably for Peter – that if the board wants to propone it, would that be with the permission – of either the applicant or we can just do it. We can just you, do it. You can request. In fact, the public hearing's closed, so. You can postpone it and request with, you know, with in the motion request a, a revised drawing based on the discussions. Okay. That's what okay. I was getting at, further parties. information. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, we can. We like, we, we do it reluctantly, but sometimes it's <clears throat> appropriate. Yeah. Any, Ms. Eldridge. Is there a motion on the table or not? Yes. There is. Yes, I'm looking for a second. Sec it. I'm Mr. looking Mr. for a second. Mr. Mannell Mr. Mannell Mr. Mannell seconded. He's okay. making a motion to postpone. Right. Okay. Postpone till next month. All right. All right. And, and Mr. Mannell seconded yes. for discussion. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Anybody, anybody else? I'm ready to discuss. Anybody, so, everybody ready to vote? No, no I'd, like to, I'd, <laughs> okay. have a, I'd like to say something. I, I've looked at the application, especially the revised application. I think it meets all the criteria as presented. I'm ready to support the application, so I'll be not supporting the motion to postpone. Okay, fair enough. Okay, anything anything further before we take a vote on the motion to postpone till next month? As I said, we we do this reluctantly, but sometimes it seems like the the best course. So, all right. Any further discussion on the motion? Huh? Okay, it, the motion is to postpone. Mr. Mano? No. Okay, let me get my pin in the right place here. <clears throat> Mr. McDonald? Yes. Yes. Mr. Lee? No. No. Down, Mr. Rossi? No. No. Ms. Eldridge? No. No. All right. I was going to vote yes, and I still will. All right. So that, that motion fails, so we need another, we need another motion. <clears throat> I'm prepared to make a motion. I'll have to make a comment first, though. Okay, please. When, you, when we grant a variance or a special exception for anything, we're, we're actually granting it to the property, not to the person. So I'm, I'm in total sympathy with the, you know, the struggles with aging parents. I've gone through that myself, a family member with Alzheimer's and all that. That said, again, we're granting any relief to the property. It runs in perpetuity. That variance will endure and, and survive long after everybody in this room is gone. So. That's what one of the things we're charged with. Uh, I've looked at the revised uh, uh, plan that uh, the architect submitted, and I think that more than meets the criteria, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application as amended. With, with the inclusion of the deck or without the deck? Because they offered to delete the deck. Without the deck. Okay. Is that a motion? It is a motion. To approve? As modified modified addition without the deck without the deck okay so everybody clear what we're voting on I'll okay. second all right okay all right thank you for the motion <coughs> is there a second to that motion as I'll second Ms. Eldridge thank you okay yeah. anything anything further before we take a vote on that motion no all right I'll start I'll start down this time uh, with Mr. Rossi yes Ms. Eldridge yes all right Excuse me. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Yes? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mallow? Yes. All right. And, <clears throat> and excuse me, and Mr. May and Mr. Lee? Yes. Yes. And the chairman votes no. So, 
The motion is carried. It's approved as modified minus the deck. Okay. All right. Everybody's saying all right. Thank you all very much. Thank you for all, everybody just, for coming. Just remember, this is just for variances. The plan here <coughs> hasn't been approved. Okay? And the CUP hasn't been approved. There's still plenty of places to make changes. Okay, fine. Just, okay, just, slap, slap my wrist. just a formality. Okay. Formality. We had enough discussion on the. Well, I, <laughs> Thank I you, agree. Jim. I, I agree. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. I agree. All right. Sounds like Sony. Eight thirty. We're making great. We're making great progress. Okay. All right. I actually have my seat. Everyone is leaving. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> we'll move. We're going to move right along to item D on the agenda. And Mr. Chair, can I just make a request on behalf of the public, actually? Please. Um, so as I was uh, sitting outside, I struggled to hear um, both the speakers and a lot of the board members. Okay. Um, and one of the uh, members of the community told me that it's very hard for people to hear and requested that we bring our microphones closer to us so that everybody can hear Good the deliberations. Good idea. Thank you. Yeah, these type of microphones, you have to speak right into the end of them like oh, that. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Ms. Marsh. And 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 the same. And I had asked one of the speakers. And when and let me just repeat that. When you come up, get get uncomfortably close to that microphone and speak right into the end of it, please. Okay, that takes care of that item. Uh, next is item D: the request of Christopher H. Garrett Revocable Trust Trust for two of two hundred. 2007, the owner, for property located at 1299 Islington Street, whereas relief is needed to subdivide one lot into two lots, which require the following. One, variances from section 10.5 to 1 to allow A, a lot area and a lot area per dwelling unit of 12,366 square feet, where 15,000 square feet is required for each. And by, and B, 99 feet of continuous street frontage where 100 feet of continuous street frontage is required. Said property is located on a CESA map 233, lot 19, 119, and lies within the single residence B, SRB district. Who speak, who would present this to the board, please? <laughs> Good evening, Chair Parrott. It's Monica Kaiser from Hopeful Phoenix, Gormley and Roberts. Good evening. Standing uncomfortably close to the microphone thank, so thank that you. I can be we, heard. We appreciate that. And so does the audience. Uh, with me tonight um, is Chris and Leslie Garrett. They're sitting in the second row to my left. Um, and Alex Ross from Ross Engineering is here in the front row, who's done the technical work, the survey work on this case. Alex has brought low-tech plans because I might not be able to figure out how to do the, that's, that's fine. the fancy stuff. In any event, I'll continue to speak uncomfortably close and I'll try to go quickly. The Thank first you. thing I'd like to do um, is I have some supplements to provide the board. Um, I did email them to Peter and upload them, but I don't know if you've received them. We'll, we'll pass them down. Unless you grab the, we can't hear you. the no. other microphone. So the first thing that's coming down the aisle to you is an Exhibit E, which is a list of abutting neighbors who support the proposal. Um, on the first page and on the second page is a little map so you can see where those supporting people live. Now, the other thing coming down the aisle is a new and improved revised Exhibit C. Exhibit C is a map of the surrounding areas that shows you um, the surrounding lots that are non-conforming as to frontage, lot size, or both. 
Um, the revised Exhibit C uh, corrects a couple mistakes on that map that I prepared. Um, and also in the upper right hand corner gives the percentages um, and it tells you that 41 percent of, of those lots on the tax map are non-conforming as to frontage and it tells you that 50 percent wait non-conforming as to frontage and lot size is that right and 50 percent of them are non-conforming as to lot size only um, so that's the context of the surrounding area, which I think is important. So Chris and Leslie have owned this property, or their family has owned this property since the 1900s. Um, it's been in the family for a very long time. Um, Leslie lives in the house now. Um, Chris lives uh, on the other side of the rail bed. Um, the property is getting to be a little much for Leslie to handle, um, and that's why they're looking to make these um, requests to you. Um, to outline the lot, um, I don't know where the little thing is, but in any event, the lot is up on the screen. No. That's the existing conditions lot. So you'll see it's got 199 feet of frontage. It's got about 27,000. Um, I'm not even, was even on the list. You're mumbling. Is, do you have a question or? Okay, I thought I heard something. Sorry, it must be out in the hallway. Uh, so I think it's about 27,366. It's 0.628 acres as it stands right now. And you'll see as you look at it that the um, existing house that Leslie lives in is way up at the front right corner. Uh, and there's an existing barn behind it. The entire left side of the lot is, is just untouched. It's unused. Um, it's bordered, um, obviously, by residential properties on either side and across the street. But then behind it is a rail bed. Uh, and on the other side of it, um, I think, is a little bit more residential area, but also the office research zone. <coughs> um, so what we're looking to do, if you can go to the next page, Peter, um, we'd like to subdivide this lot to create two lots. One lot would be the lot that Leslie's house and Leslie and Chris's house is sitting on. Um, and that lot would be entirely conforming. It would conform with the 100 foot frontage requirement. It would be 15,000 square feet of lot area. Um, and the coverage on that would be about 12% where 20% is permitted. So that lot would be entirely compliant. Um, the relief is required for the second lot, which would be 99.3.3 uh, uh, feet of frontage where 100 feet is required and about 12,366 square feet where 15,000 square feet is required for a dwelling unit. <coughs> Um, obviously, the 99.33 square feet is, you know, 99% and change of the uh, required 100 feet of frontage. 12,366 <coughs> square feet is about 82% of the required uh, lot size and the lot size per dwelling unit. Do you have any questions so far? Okay, so I'm going to go right into the criteria, if you don't yes, mind. Yes, please do. Uh, so I've laid this out in writing in the memorandum, but to hit the high points, um, taking the first two criteria together, the public interest and spirit of the ordinance, um, you know, the question is whether granting the variance would unduly and um, to a marked degree conflict so much so that it would violate the ordinance's basic objectives. And we always remind the board, mere conflict alone is not enough. Um, you ha in my memorandum, um, I go through the purposes of the ordinance and I describe um, how this proposal either advances those purposes or, or does not undermine them. Um, the highlights I would add, of course, are that um, we're creating uh, one additional residence, we're creating new housing, and we're citing it among uh, very similar lots. As you can see from Exhibit C as revised, 91% of the surrounding lots are non-conforming. 
as to lot size or frontage. 41% um, of them are non-conforming as to lot size and frontage. Um, and we didn't even consider um, and examine closely the number of two families in the area. There are certainly some, perhaps not a lot. Um, but our analysis as to lot size and lot size per dwelling unit didn't even examine that. Um, we feel that it's compelling as it stands um, when you look at the um, small lots and the surrounding developed area. Um, so the request for this new lot, it's going to it's going to live among other lots that are very similar. It's not going to um, violate the ordinance objectives. Um, the lot size of 82% of the requirement um, is sufficiently large amount to easily provide enough space for a modest home within a building envelope um, and within coverage requirements. Um, and as such, uh, certainly allows uh, adequate opportunity to, for stormwater and other things to be managed on the lot. Um, and for the same reasons, this proposal doesn't alter the essential character of the locality or threaten health, safety, and welfare. Um, we have essentially a thickly settled area, um, and once a house is built on this lot, it's going to look like it belongs in this neighborhood um, because 91% of the, of the lots on the tax map are also nonconforming. Um, it, it will not diminish the value of surrounding properties um, as a uh, as demonstrated and agreed to by the abutters who are in support of the proposal. And if you look at that exhibit, it's not just a list of the proposed of the abutting support the abutters who support the proposal. Page two illustrates where those people are, so that you can see that the property owners on either side of the property uh, support the proposal, um, as well as. Um, the owner across the street support the proposal, and then more, and then more. Um, so we're very pleased that we have the support of our neighbors. Um, next, uh, unnecessary hardship. Um, the first, it's a three-part test, as you know. With the first being whether or not there are special conditions that exist. Um, we think that given this oversized lot in this transitional zone uh, with the house and the barn located all the way to one side, um, leaving this large area underutilized, um, as well as the case law that I outlined in the memorandum that talks about um, whether a hardship can be found given the context of an area, we think that special conditions exist. Uh, and there's no fair and substantial relationship between the purposes of the ordinance as applied to this proposal when essentially we're asking for a variance for, you know, an, essentially 99% of the frontage um, and a substantially sized lot still at 82% uh, of the required lot size and frankly uh, larger than some, than some surrounding lots. Um, the subdivision uh, of the lot, um, which will, of course, be evaluated by the planning board as well. Um, as I said, the subdivision allows a new lot but um, and provides an opportunity to put the new house appropriately um, sized new house within the building envelope on the new lot, um, meeting uh, setbacks and coverage requirements. Um, and then the third prong of the variance of, excuse me, of the unnecessary hardship test is whether the proposal is reasonable. Um, as cited in the, in the brief, you can see that um, it's a residential use in a residential zone and therefore it's presumed to be reasonable. Lastly, the substantial justice test, it's articulated in the memo and what I would say to that is that, um, again, same thing, granting the variances to accommodate uh, one modest home on a lot similar to those of the surrounding area um, it does a substantial justice. There's no benefit to the public from denial that outweighs the hardship to Chris and Leslie. Um, and uh, frankly, the hardship to Chris and Leslie might be that they can't afford to continue to live in this property um, as they get older. Um, they've um, reached out to uh, neighbors and it's likely that one of the family members of, of the neighbor um, is interested in purchasing the property and, and constructing a modest house um, and this way is a win-win for that neighborhood. Um, if there's anything that I missed, I'll ask Alex to address it. Otherwise, if you have any questions, or I'm all good. 
Anything from the board for the speaker at this moment? No. Thank, thank you very much. Is there someone else present who'd like to speak in favor of this proposal, please? Anyone else to speak in favor? Please come up. You, your name and address, if you would, please. Good evening and thank you. Ralph DiBernardo, and I'm here to speak for my wife, Linda, and I. We aren't abutters, but we are in the neighborhood. Um, I wanted to reiterate uh, that was an excellent presentation on the varying size of the lots in the neighborhood. Uh, we bought a house on Islington Street that was built in 1937 uh, in the block that's formed by Islington Street, uh, Essex, uh, Essex Avenue, Melbourne Street, and Vine Street. There's 19 houses in that block, and more than half of them are on lots 50 foot frontage, 100 foot deep, 5,000 square feet as well as houses on Islington Street going down the hill from the blinking light. There are houses built on lots that are 50 by 100 foot. Um, the exception in the neighborhood are the handful of larger lots, which this will be one of. Uh, and so we're here to speak in favor of the project. Thank, Thank you. you. And can we have your street address, please? I'm sorry, 13, 1374 Islington. 1374. Thank you very much. Uh, other speakers, please. Anyone else who wants to speak in favor? Anyone else? Anyone opposed? Is anyone opposed to this? Wants to come up and speak? No, apparently not. Lot, this is last call for speakers. Two, for or against? Anybody? Anybody have anything to, for the board? Apparently, anything on the Zoom call, no. Mr. Stith? No. Okay, thank you. Okay. A public hearing is closed. Uh, board, what's your, we've heard the proposal. What's, what's your desire on this one? I would like to make a motion that we approve the variances as requested. Thank you, Mr. Rossi. Is there a second to that motion to approve? Second. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mantle. Uh, Mr. Rossi, your, your motion, please. The core of the uh, motion is that uh, the deviation in terms of the frontage requirement is very minor and also in terms of lot area, there is a special condition for the lot. Uh, there's a little notch uh, taken out of the back of it that bores along the railroad track uh, that really doesn't affect anybody else but probably takes away just about the amount of square footage that would bring this into compliance. Uh, so on that basis, I see no uh, no, nothing in here that's contrary to the public interest. Uh, it certainly would be in the spirit of the ordinance. Uh, the proposed use would be certainly within character for the area and for that neighborhood. Uh, there would be a substantial justice because there's no, uh, there's no uh, loss, of, uh, loss of utility to the public or anybody around the area, and there's a good gain for uh, the property owners. I see no indication that granting the variance would diminish the value of the surrounding properties and probably actually would enhance them. And uh, again, there's a special condition of the property which, because of its odd shape, uh, makes the second lot uh, appear to be somewhat smaller than it probably, you know, otherwise would be. All right. That, that's, that's the last criteria. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Mantle? I agree with Ms. What Mr. Rossi said, um, I live in the neighborhood. I am not in a butter. Um, the lot is just under. As far as I'm concerned, the requests are minimal. Um, when they split the lot, at least one will be a conforming lot, and the other one will be slightly under. Um, I see no issue with it. Thank you very much. Anybody else on the board? Any, any other comments? Observations before we take a vote, which is to approve it as presented? No, apparently not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rossi? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Ms. Eldridge? Yes. Ms. Margeson? Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. And Mr. Mantle? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And I, and I vote yes as well. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you all. Okay. You're welcome. You. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, it's close to nine o'clock. Board. Uh, <coughs> is is anyone inclined for a 
five to ten minute, no more than ten minute a break. No objection. Done. Right. We're in rest. We're in recess.
Thank you for the break. We're back in session. Uh, first order of business, in order to uh, accommodate some uh, mechanics of uh, time here, we have a request to, to switch the order of two uh, of our applications. And uh, <clears throat> one is number six, which is 139 Essex Avenue. Yes. And the other one is the uh, 405 uh, South Street. So switch the order of those under the impression that one is probably going to go quicker than the other. Is there anyone in the board who would be interested in doing that? This is just a request to the board to do that. We don't have to, but if it if it's inclined, if someone is so inclined to do it, uh, would so someone moved. make a motion? motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Rossi. Is there a second to that motion to switch the order of those two? Second? Yeah, Ms. Eldridge? Yes, thank you. Okay. A voice voice vote will do on this, I think. Uh, those in favor of switching the order, dealing with both of them tonight, just in a different order, please say aye. 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 Okay. Everybody, thank you. Okay. Done. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> that, <clears throat> what that means is that uh, the next item up on the agenda is 139 Essex Street. And the item reads as follows. Request of Peggy L. Morrow, owner, for property located at 139 Essex Avenue, whereas relief is needed to demolish an existing dwelling and construct a new single family dwelling, which requires the following. <clears throat> One, variances from section 10.521 to allow A, a lot area and a lot area per dwelling unit of 11,581 square feet where 15,000 square feet is required, and B, 75 feet of continuous street frontage where 100 feet of continuous street frontage is required. Said property is located on a SESAM map 233 as lot 60 and lies within the single residence B, SRB district. Who, fix, who speaks in favor of this proposal, please? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for the record, Attorney Derek Durbin. I'm here on behalf of Mill Pond Way LLC and its sole member, Joe Calderola, who I also have with me, seated behind me, um, to your left. Uh, my client, Mill Pond Way, uh, is under contract right now to purchase 139 Essex Avenue. Uh, the property is a non-conforming lot of record with respect to lot area and continuous street frontage in its existing condition. It has 11,581 square feet of land area where 15,000 square feet is required in the SRB zoning district and continuous street frontage of 75 feet where 100 feet is required. Uh, I would also point out the existing house on the property encroaches in the right yard setback by five feet. Um, so the existing has a five foot setback. Uh, the existing home on the property is in poor condition, uh, has an obsolete floor plan, poor finishes <laughs> and contains a number of structural deficiencies. You'll notice if you've seen some of the pictures of the property or been by it, the driveway uh, slopes into the attached garage, uh, which has been damaged over a, a number of many years uh, by water intrusion. I mean, the reality associated with this home is it just doesn't have enough going for it to justify trying to, to rehab it or restore it. It doesn't have any historical value. My client intends to demolish the home and garage and construct a small three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath home on it. <clears throat> the home uh, that's proposed for the lot would meet all the setback requirements, so there would actually be an improvement over the existing conditions. However, um, because it fails to meet um, the lot area requirement or the continuous street frontage requirements, we do need two variances, or technically three. I know the city lists lot areas a required variance. Um, not sure I always agree with that um, because it's an existing lot, but nonetheless, um, that variance is listed, and we are requesting that variance as well. Turning the variance criteria, uh, <coughs> granting the variances will not be contrary to the public interest would observe, observe the spirit of the ordinance. Uh, the minimum lot area and street frontage requirements are implemented uh, for the purpose of controlling density primarily, um, also for maintaining the character of a neighborhood. The property and the home on it uh, predate current zoning standards. The property is consistent in size and contains similar street frontage to most of the surrounding properties. 
By demolishing the home and constructing a new one in its place, my client will be bringing the property into greater conformance with the ordinance uh, with the improvement of the right yard setback. Uh, the uh, construction of the new home will also observe the density goal of SRB zoning um, and will be consistent with the character of the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, for these reasons, granting the variances will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Um, unlike the new home, the current, uh, the proposed home will have to meet uh, building standards um, as they exist now, current life safety codes. Um, therefore, um, it will actually benefit the public and will not be a threat to public health, safety, or welfare. Substantial justice will be done by granting the variances. In the Malky Glenn case, the Supreme Court uh, opine that any loss to the individual that's not outweighed by a gain uh, to the general public is an injustice. Uh, here, there would be no gain to the public in denying the variances. It would really be do nothing to, to, to benefit anyone. It would co constitute a hardship upon the landowner to deny the right to build a new single-family home on the property. Therefore, the loss of the applicant in denying the variances outweighs any perceived benefit to the public. The value of surrounding properties will not be diminished by granting the variances. Um, the applicant, uh, Mill Pond Way, is a well-reputed um, developer in the city. Joe Calderola, the builder, um, would be constructing a, is what you can see, a tastefully designed home for the lot uh, that would be consistent with surrounding architecture. And there's evidence throughout the city, particularly in recent years, that demonstrates that surrounding property values should actually um, only increase with uh, a new home on the lot. Literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. Uh, this relates to the nonconformities associated with the lot as it exists now and the fact that it does have a single family home on it um, that's nonconforming. Therefore, the construction of anything on this property does require the variances being sought. And, you know, the reality is that denying the variances would result in a worse outcome than, than granting them. So, uh, for these uh, reasons and the fact that SRB zoning um, permits and encourages single-family homes by right. Um, the use is reasonable. I would submit to the board that the five criteria for granting the variance is met and happy to answer any questions you have. And um, Joe is here to answer any um, specific design questions you may have as well. Any questions from the board for the speaker at this time? No, apparently not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone present who'd like to speak in favor of this? Anyone in... Anyone who want to address the board in favor of this proposal? No, no, apparently not. Anyone opposed? Is there anyone present opposed? Come up and uh, your, na your name and address for the record, please. My name is Joanne Wolf. I live at 213 Gate Street, but I'm speaking on behalf of my daughter and son-in-law, Allison and Sean McGrimley, who live at 56 Sheffield, um, which abuts this property, backs up to this property. So. I'm not sure I'm even objecting to the variance. I'm, I'm just questioning the documents with the plans that were submitted. Um, they talk about a, a two-story, three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath, and the plans look like it's a three-story with a balcony in the back, and it looks like it's three-and-a-half baths. There looks like there's a full bath on that third story. So um, we're questioning which is what the builder is planning to do. All right, thank you. I'll, I'll invite them to clarify that in a minute. Is there uh, anyone else to speak in opposition? Anyone else? None? Okay. Uh, two for and against, and anybody wants to address that uh, question raised by the last speaker? Please, please do. Hi. Uh, for the record, Joe Calderola. Um, your, your address, please? Oh, 170 Dennett Street, Portsmouth. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the... the uh, the floor plan is exactly the same as houses we built before, and the question is whether the attic gets finished or not. It's a, it's a New Englander. Uh, there's no dormers. Um, but I think the what happened was that by the time we actually drew the plans for the lot, we decided to go ahead and finish the attic, so there is a bath up there. So the two-and-a-half bath is, was a misstatement. So it's actually three-and-a-half bath. Uh, the, uh, if you look at the... If you look at the, well, there is a stair dormer there, a minor stair dormer. But if you look at the rear elevation, I'm not sure I know how to do this. Yeah, see, there's an inset balcony. That's what the butter was talking about. 
but it doesn't project up or out, or it's it's inset in, under the roof. Um, so it's a uh, we would call this a two-story house, New Englander with a finished third floor. Okay, thank you. Anybody else two for or against? Anybody? Last call. Any speakers? No. Mr. Stith, anybody on the Zoom? No one on the Zoom call. Thank you. Okay, last call. Seeing nobody, we'll close the public hearing. Okay, board, what's your pleasure on this application? Discussion or perhaps a motion? <clears throat> We already had our break. We can't get another one. <laughs> Chair, Mr. Would, Lee, uh, yeah. I would uh, be prepared to make a motion to approve this application as presented in the past. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? To approve. Ms. Second. Ms. Eldridge? No. Oh, oh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mayle. I, I was looking. Mr. Mayle got it first. I thought so. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayle. Your, uh, Mr. Lee, your motion, please. So it, it seems that. Uh, Demolishing and rebuilding existing homes is beginning to uh, has become a thing in Portsmouth, and I see a lot of that in my business. And I think it's a, a good thing overall. You get, as uh, the attorney uh, presented, that you get a uh, code compliant house with all the life safety features that some of the older houses don't have. Certainly, having a brand new home in the neighborhood <coughs> enhance property value. So I'll just go through the criteria quickly to get uh, to get to the uh, to voting. So I don't see this variance being contrary to the public interest and it observes the spirit of the ordinance. Uh, there's really nothing in demolishing a house and building it with a new one, replacing it with a new one, and pretty much the exact same floor plant. It's uh, slightly non-compliant now. It'll be the same slight amount of non-compliance when it's completed. So that uh, checks those two boxes. Substantial justice is done. The benefit to the applicant is not outweighed any harm to the general public and the other individuals here. And again, certainly no diminution. I always have trouble pronouncing that word. It doesn't uh, hurt the surrounding property values in any way, in my opinion, as a real estate broker. And literal enforcement of this uh, ordinance would result in this hardship, and that hardship would be not being able to uh, complete the purchase and present the city of Portsmouth with a brand new code compliant house for a nice family to live in and be part of our city. So for that, uh, those reasons, I move that we approve this application as presented and advertised. Thank you, Mr. Mantle. Um, with everything Mr. Lee said, if anything, the mm -hmm. new structure will be more conforming than it currently is now. So. <laughs> I agree. Okay, thank you. Anything further from the board? If not, let's, uh, Ms. Ms. Rogerson. So I, I just echoing on what Mr. Lee said, um, it, we are we are seeing a lot of demolition of houses and reconstructions. Um, I think that's unfortunate. I, I think that this house is really neat. I'm very sorry to lose it. Uh, but that said, that's not within our purview. Um, <clears throat> and I do think I will be voting for this because I do think that uh, the variance request is reasonable and de minimis. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, we're all set. Mr. Uh, we'll take the vote. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Ms. Elbridge? Yes. Ms. Margison? Yes. Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay. Nope. Yes. Mr. Mayor left. I'm left. sorry. <laughs> Who did I leave out? Mr. Mantle? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go too fast. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> that brings us to the uh, next item on the, on the agenda, on the revised order of agenda, and that is uh, for 405 uh, South Street, and reads as follows: Request of Julia I. Tybo for. Revocable Trust of 2009 Oliver for property located at 405 South Street, whereas relief is needed to subdivide one lot into two lots and construct single family dwelling, which requires the following. One, variance is from section 10.521 to allow A, 30 feet of continuous street frontage where 100 feet is required for proposed lot two, 
and B, 15.5, a variad of 15.5, where 20 feet is required. Said property is located on Assessor Map 111 as Lot 18 and lies within the General Residence A, GRA District. Who, who presents this proposal, please? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, again, for the record, Attorney Derek Durbin. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, SAI Builders. Um, I have Patrick Nyston, who works with SAI Builders, with me, behind me. I also have John Scheidman from Ambit Engineering, um, who's worked on the plans, and Julie Robb, the owner of the property as well, is here. Um, SAI Builders, as I noted in my narrative, is under contract to per per purchase a portion of the property if the relief tonight is granted. Um, Hence the reason they're the applicant before you. 405 South Street is um, truly a unique property uh, when you look at it, particularly on the, um, on the tax map, um, when viewed in the context of the larger neighborhood and the lots that surround it. It's a very long rectangular property that has more than three times the lot area that's required in the GRA zoning district um, and nearly 23,000 square feet. Um, it also has frontage on two different streets, um, 30 feet on McNabb Court, uh, 70 feet on South Street. Uh, there is a uh, single family home with a detached garage at the front of the property um, adjacent to South Street and the rear of the property, um, basically most of the property, uh, consists of open land in the back. Uh, my client is seeking to subdivide the property into two lots of nearly equal size. Uh, lot one, uh, or proposed lot one, would contain the existing single family house. Um, that would be retained by Miss Rob and her family. Uh, lot two uh, would be acquired by my client, as said, Builders, who intends to construct a four bedroom, two and a half bath, uh, single family home with an attached garage on it. Uh, there was a mistake in my narrative. I had said one and a half bath. Apparently, I'm making that mistake a lot tonight. It's two and a half baths. In order to subdivide the property into two single family home lots, um, my client needs variances for the lack of um, street, needs a variance for the lack of street frontage. Um, they also need a variance to construct the uh, proposed home on lot two, uh, do the um, encroachment of the rear um, associated with the attached garage into the set, rear yard setback. Uh, so four and a half foot deviation uh, that's being requested. Uh, I would like to point out as a preliminary matter um, that you should have received some letters of support um, from Britton and Tatiana Schoen um, of 11 Elwyn Avenue, um, the Vince Aguera's, uh, who are direct abutters at 393, 395 South Street. That's the property to the right when looking at the property from South Street. <clears throat> um, as well as uh, Ms. Ms. Rob also submitted a letter of support um, for the project. Uh, I also understand um, you're going to hear some opposition to the application tonight. Um, I'm aware of some of the concerns that have been addressed or to the board or have been voiced to the board, um, a number of which are related to um, drainage on the lot, on the lot collecting water um, in the rear portion, or the northern portion of the lot or the property. Um, also concerns about access. Um, I know this board's aware that those issues, if the approvals were granted tonight, would be addressed specifically um, before the Technical Advisory Committee, which um, this actually, the plans have been there for, a, for an initial review already, a workshop session. Um, and all the technical issues um, associated with drainage and access um, will be flushed out and will be um, something that does have to be addressed by the applicant at the planning board level. Um, ultimately, uh, my client will be improving the drainage conditions on the property, which should benefit um, surrounding properties, um, some of which actually kind of drain onto this property or do drain onto this property. Um, in addition, public safety and access to the abutting properties along the NAB court should be improved, as I'll touch upon um, when I go through the variance criteria. Turning the variance criteria, uh, granting the variances will not be contrary to the public interest, will observe the spirit of the ordinance. In order to determine whether granting the variances would be contrary to the public interest would observe the spirit of the ordinance, I think it's necessary to consider the specific intent behind the requirements that are being applied here. The street frontage requirements, as I pointed out with the last application, are prim primarily intended for controlling density. They've always been a density control. To some degree, they also 
are put in place to ensure that you have appropriate access um, for emergency vehicles to property. As I pointed out in my narrative, if you were to merge the four closest lots of McNabb Court together, they'd be of nearly equal dimension to just one of these two lots. So that's how big each, each of the proposed lots would be after being subdivided. In fact, lot two would be larger than all the surrounding properties except for the property to the right owned by the Vincigueros who su submitted a letter of support before you tonight. The 30 foot feet of street frontage on McNabb Court would be consistent with the neighboring properties on McNabb Court, um, all of which I believe have around 40 feet approximately of road frontage in their existing state. Therefore, the density goals of uh, the GRA zoning district and the spirit of the ordinance are met by granting um, the variance for lot two. Uh, the new home will also be built in accordance with current building and life safety standards, um, wouldn't impose any undue burden on municipal services. So for these reasons, just speaking of the frontage variance, uh, it will not be contrary to the public interest and would observe the spirit of the ordinance and would not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Speaking of the rear yard setback variance, uh, this relates to the proposed garage primarily on lot two. Uh, was, I mean, this is a feature that most home buyers now, at least for new construction, I'm sure Mr. Lee is aware of this as well, desire when purchasing in New Hampshire at this point, um, just due to our winters that we have here. Um, it is true that it will create a nonconformity where none currently exists. Um, but I do believe that the request is reasonable when you consider the intent behind the building setback provisions and the proximity of the garage to existing structures on neighboring properties and the context of the surrounding neighborhood, um, which has a number of um, structures that are right up against property lines um, similar to this, uh, will be set back a considerable distance from the nearest structure. Uh, I believe the nearest structure was calculated about 81 feet away from this. Uh, so the building setback requirements, as you know, are imposed primarily to protect the light, air, and space between structures on abutting properties. This will meet that goal, won't have any um, impact upon the nearest butter, and um, the nearest the butter has provided a letter of support. And uh, I think you'll also see by looking at the tax map that I included in the submission um, that the Two closest properties to the north on, of proposed lot two on Lincoln Avenue do have detached garages that encroach into the rear yard setbacks. So this is a characteristic that's very common um, throughout the neighborhood. The applicant did spend a considerable amount of time and effort trying to locate the home on proposed lot two so that no variance would be um, needed for the rear portion associated with the garage. Um, this wasn't possible for a number of reasons if, if you are to have a garage on the property. Uh, the primary reason is that we're proposing to allow snow to, to be plowed down McNabb Court uh, for the plow trucks to be able to take a left-hand turn into the property and um, actually store snow on the property. Uh, as it exists now, snow is plowed up against the fence um, at the end of McNabb Court where it ends at our property. Um, this um, it does actually create an access issue, but it also <coughs> creates an access issue for the abutting property owners because it piles snow right in front of their houses. So we're actually um, looking to alleviate that. And in order to do that, you have to move the garage a little bit back. Um, if we were to show you sort of the turning radiuses of going into the property and, plow and putting that snow to the left, you, we, we, we're putting the garage basically up against the edge of where it's possible to take that left-hand turn in if you're a plow truck. Uh, so for these reasons, uh, granting the rear yard setback variance is reasonable and consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. Substantial justice will be done by granting the variances uh, due to the length and size of the property. It has an oversized, underutilized backyard. Because of the size and frontage on McNabb Court, it does make it ideal for um, subdivision, the creation of a new single family home. Uh, it is important to point out to the board um, that the owner could actually develop a structure that would be of equal size to the proposed home um, in this location of the property and use the existing access down Mc McNabb Court if they so desired um, to build some sort of outbuilding. It wouldn't be a home, but it also wouldn't be subject to all the technical review that this is going to have to go to and meeting all the drainage conditions and everything else that this is going to have to meet, which is really going to have to improve conditions and make it better for the abutters. 
so they could actually do that. Um, another use, although it would likely require a frontage variance, would be that they could construct up to three condominiums on the existing lot um, by right with the lot area, just not with the frontage since it's 70 feet. So, I, I mean, those are important things to point out because I know you're going to hear some concerns about any structure being built back there. Um, so I would submit to the board there is no gain to the public in denying the variances requested. Um, to the contrary, I believe that there is a benefit um, and that the balance of equities weighs in favor of granting the variances. And as Ms. Rob pointed out in her letter to the board, her plan is really she's trying to lessen her tax burden associated with this property, um, convey proposed lot two to my clients, take that money and pass it on to her estate and also to pass lot one, which she um, plans to, to keep as long as she's alive um, to the rest of her family members. So, and that's the plan with the property. So there is a loss if the application is denied. The value surrounding properties will not be diminished by granting the variances. Um, to the contrary, I do believe there's ample evidence that proves that surrounding property values would only increase with the creation of a new single family home. Um, SEI Builders, as examples, constructed and fully renovated um, several other homes in the um, <coughs> south end, all of which were non-conforming, whether it was re with respect to lot area, frontage, setbacks. Um, I believe the board can rely <laughs> upon those. Um, 84 Rockland Avenue, 21 Elwin, 27 Elwin, as examples of how surrounding property values will be maintained or increased. Uh, my client does develop well-designed homes. They do fit within the context of their surroundings. And I think um, that's being attested to as well in the letter you received from uh, Britton and Tatiana Schoen of 1101 Avenue. Literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. Speaking of the frontage variance, uh, the property is longer and larger than the surrounding properties. as frontage on two public streets. So when you look at that in the context of the surrounding area, it is truly unique in its environment. When subdivided, each lot will meet and exceed the minimum lot area requirements for, for GRA zoning, thus complying with the purpose and intent behind the frontage requirement to control density. Um, and as I pointed out a moment ago, um, you could build something out here um, other than a home, but that would essentially have the same development impacts, but not be subject to the same oversight by the city. Uh, so these special conditions do make it distinguishable from surrounding properties such that there is no fair and substantial relationship between the general purpose of the ordinance provision, the frontage requirement, and its application here. Uh, with respect to the rear yard setback variance, um, this really um, is associated with the topography of the property um, and that being able to um, turn into the, the left side of the property and, and, and store snow there, which is a benefit um, to, to really only to surrounding property owners um, and provide for safer access as well. Um, so for these reasons, there is no fair and substantial relationship between the rear setback variance and its application here, um, the rear setback provision and its application here. <coughs> Um, finally, the proposed use is reasonable. It's permitted by right in the GRA zoning district to be used as a single family um, residential. Uh, in conclusion, um, I understand as, as a former board member um, on this board, it's obviously difficult when you hear from a lot of abutters that are opposed to a project. I also understand their concerns um, that are, um, you know, valid concerns related to drainage, um, access, and also the fact that they're going to lose a view of open space if the, if the property is developed. Um, but I would point out again, it, it can be developed out here, um, whether it's a single family home or something else. Um, so the property is truly unique. I'd submit to the board um, that we do meet the five variance criteria for granting both of the variances being sought tonight. And I would just ask the board um, before you close the public hearing, since there is a lot of um, opposition that we um, be granted the opportunity to respond to any concerns that the individual board members may have, um, if any, um, before the public hearing's closed, just because I know how it is. Sometimes public hearing gets closed and you're like, oh, wait, I got one more thing to say. I heard this concern expressed, but it's closed. So <coughs> I would just ask to, to be given an opportunity to re respond to any concern anybody might have on the board. So I, I thank you for that and uh, happy to answer any questions that you have right now. Any question, Mr. Mail? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, great presentation, Derek. Um, question. 
looking at the map, is do you know if McNabb Court is a public street all the way to your property? It's my understanding it is a public street. Um, it's that, that it's expressly been treated as a public street and recognized as such. Okay. Um, yes, and also um, the fact that the city does plow down it as well would be at least some evidence that it is as well. Yeah, the only reason I ask when I'm looking at the city maps and you have something that stops. Yeah, I know. I, I tried to, um, I, and I asked John about this too, we, we tried to, he pulled up an ancient plan of the area because we actually wanted to see if this was actually more than um, one lot. It was impossible to tell. The, the um, plan that we were able to get didn't exactly show this property, but it showed some of the surrounding ones. It showed McNabb Court actually extending farther than it does now. But yeah, yeah. It, the only way to tell is to pull up all the surrounding house lots yeah. and see if there's an easement or whatever like that. Just like yeah, Aiden it was really Road. difficult though looking at the. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, Mr. McDonald? Do you know if there would be an easement required for the the snow storage? I I think it's going to be an easement that the city requires. That's what's been discussed so far. Um, it did go through the um, uh, the the TAC um, committee um, okay. it, for the workshop session. I don't know if this was specifically addressed. I know it's been represented the city will have the ability to store snow on the property. I assume that the city is going to require an easement, not a license, because <coughs> otherwise it, it's not going to have that permanency. So, And the plan is for that to be a permanent solution for the city because there's really nowhere else for the snow to go down there. Uh, so would you um, characterize the position of the city now as favorable? Uh, um, I, I know that, um, and I, I know John can also um, speak to this. Um, I don't believe that there were any significant concerns expressed at the TAC workshop session um, so far. Um, so I think it, you know, again, it's more of a preliminary look, I guess, but so far there haven't been any major um, concerns, I think. Um, it, it's fairly, yeah. Mm. Sorry, I'll let John talk to that. Sure, thanks. John Chagman from Ambit Engineering. Um, so the City uh, Technical Advisory Committee, as you probably know, deals with technical issues of any uh, subdivision that goes forward, and so we need to go through and get their approval. We met with them, and they were very concerned about drainage and protecting the neighborhood. So we're working on some solutions that would um, not have any impact to the neighborhood. Uh, so they're very, um, uh, they've come forward with some ideas and we've been tasked with implementing those ideas in the next phase of the design. Uh, so I don't want to characterize it as they've voted in favor, but they've established a clear way forward that we, if we deal with the drainage, which we will, uh, then uh, the project can move forward. They've also talked about the, uh, as you said, the easement for snow plowing, uh, where that snow can be plowed. And so we've discussed it with them and we think that that's something mm -hmm. they would be um, happy to have because of the situation that exists now uh, so is a dead end. And um, would you say you can't, you can't reach a conclusion right now, but it's moving in the right direction? Yes, I would say yeah. most definitely, yes. Okay. And uh, the, as, Mr. Durbin mentioned the um, street, uh, McNabb Court used to go through, it was platted as a through street and there were probably six lots in this area and that never got developed. And then somebody developed the hook with the four lots that are on it. So I don't know when that occurred, but I think it was probably just by deed because there isn't a subdivision plan of that. I think that just happened over time. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Ms. Magnuson? So I know, you know, I'm familiar with this with this street, and it's very tricky, very very tricky. Um, so I note that you have an oversized driveway, and it seems that you have a provision in there that you can do a turnaround because otherwise, getting in and out of that driveway, given the uh, dimensions of McNabb Court, would be almost impossible. Yeah, I'm going to let John speak to that. Yes. Yeah, so what you see here is uh, there's, uh, it's a one car garage and then for the second parking spot uh, it would be here 
and that would allow the either of these to, to turn around and head out. Okay, so thank you. There are two spaces that can front to the street. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rossi. I have a question with regard to the rear yard setback, uh, the request for a 15.5-foot setback where 20 is uh, required. Is that necessitated by the garage because the house the main body of the house is 20 feet correct um actually at its closest point if uh we believe it's actually at 19.4 feet um if we were to give an exact measurement um and that would be sort of in that um heading back into that northern area of the, the lot um it it's hard to tell in the plans but we do believe that that's at 19.4 feet as as it appears now to the back wall of the house yeah and that's correct that garage is 24 foot depth uh, is it 24 no, no. 22, I think. 22 yeah is that uh, it, the numbers are kind of small I'm having a hard time reading them is it 24 foot depth I think it's 22 I think it's <clears throat> yeah so it's, it's not really oversized it's not an oversized garage would it still be right. functional it's if it was in the same plane as the rear of the house in other so, words, if it wasn't bumped out? I, I don't want to take away from Derek's presentation, but I've been working with the builder on this site for a long time, trying to position the house in the best place possible. And uh, initially, the um, in looking at it, what was thought about to make this a complete neighborhood was to mimic what's going on with the two houses that exist now on the uh, north side of McNabb Court and put another house here and then the the you know the plow could just continue straight and push the snow and that was the owner would be over the moon about that because it puts the house as far back as it can from where she her house is now but in looking at the um, topography of the lot which I think is on the next sheet, if I'm not mistaken. The lot slopes from South Street. Nope, that's on the, never mind. But the topography, oh, there's the topography. So you can see how there's a hill coming off of South Street. There's a change in grade. Mm -hmm. And that bottom part of the lot, the northerly part of the lot, is actually acting as the relief point for all of the abutting properties. So the properties to the west and to the north uh, all drain onto uh, the Rob property, and uh, that area is not uh, such that it uh, holds the water and creates a wetland, but it is such that certain times of year there's a puddle there and the neighbor's water is draining onto it. So we had to look at not putting the house there, and um, then the issue became how to best deal with the fact that the street really needs a relief for the snow and the house uh, couldn't be put. I mean, another thought would be to put the house right up there and make it a full court where everybody has their cottage right on the street, which would have been nice if this was Florida, but then we got the snow. So uh, this house being as we've designed it is pushed up in, onto the hill uh, and the garage has to be pushed back so it allows for the ability to push the snow onto the property. If the garage was brought forward, it would just be simply too close to allow for that maneuver. And there's also uh, some grade changes that are going to require some stairways and whatnot. So from the builder's perspective, uh, having that offset also helped with the layout of the house and the interior stairway. Does that answer your question? Thank you. But uh, Mr. Sagan, just saying, for what, it's, for what it's worth, Mr. Rossi, the uh, sheet one of the architect's drawing shows the, show, I thought it did, <clears throat> excuse me, it shows the uh, garage is 24 by 15, 24, very clearly on sheet number one of the uh, so O'Sullivan architect's Thank sheets. you. Thank yeah, you. 24, 24 by 15. So you're correct, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else, any questions for Mr. Shagnon or Mr. De or Mr. Durbin? Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, anybody else? No? Oh, Ms. McDonald. One, one last one. Is McNabb Court an area that's not served by storm drains? 
So currently there is some storm drains that are located on this portion of McNabb Court before you take the turn. So part of the solution is probably <coughs> going to be to extend that storm drainage. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for the boards at this point? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> moving on, uh, is there anyone present who'd like to speak in favor of this, who hasn't spoken already, who'd like to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone in favor? Anyone? Yes, come up, please. Your, your name and address? Good evening. My name is Andrew Tebow, and I'm going to read a statement on behalf of Julie Robb, my mother, who's at 405, the owner. <sighs> So you're gonna have to, it's written in the first person, so you're gonna have to imagine me as a beautiful 60-something woman, <laughs> if you would. I'd like to thank the members of the Zoning Board of Adjustment for hearing my request this evening regarding my property at 405 South Street. I also wish to express my deep gratitude to the professionals who have helped make this project the very best it can be. I'd like to give you a little history on my property and explain why I made the difficult decision to sell part of my land. In 1904, my Irish immigrant ancestors, Bartholomew and Anne Malloy, purchased the property for two people who had literally grown up in small thatched roof cottages and left Ireland and their families behind. The purchase of land was an enormous undertaking. My great-grandmother took in wealthy families' laundry, raised chickens and ducks, and sold eggs, while Bart worked as a coachman until the popularity of automobiles made that impossible. He worked at the Navy Yard, taking the ferry across the river before the Memorial Bridge was built. They made do or did without. In 1905, the building of the house was completed and the family of 10 moved in. Anne Malloy often said she moved 12 times and wasn't moving again unless it was to be in the cemetery. She accomplished that goal. One of her children may be remembered by some of the ZBA members, Francis Babe Malloy, who served the city in various capacities, rec director, Portsmouth High School teacher, and vice principal. The home passed from my grandmother to my mother and then to me. The home and land are full of memories. Where someone sees just a field, I see my father's vegetable garden, a great sledding hill, and the site of numerous Easter egg hunts enjoyed by five generations of my family. As our new mayor, McEachern, stated recently, it's really important to me that on this council's watch we can do a little bit more to say that we helped build a stronger community. People who have lived here for generations have been forced from their homes and their children can't afford to stay here. The mayor's statement hits very close to my heart. I'm a single woman on Social Security, and although I have a part-time job and I'm as frugal as possible, my frugality will not fix the leaks in the attic or the inefficient heating system. My annual property taxes exceed the original cost to build the house. I want to stay here and pass the property on to my sons. But my only option to achieve that goal is to sell my lower lot. It is important to me to have some input and control over what might be built on my family's land. So a single family home and an architectural style that <coughs> complemented the existing homes was a must for me. When I saw 21 Elwyn Avenue being renovated by the SAI group and building a nearly identical new home at 27 Elwyn, I admired how seamlessly these houses fit into the neighborhood. I was intrigued by their motto, building the future, restoring the past. I have been so impressed and pleased with the communication and commitment by SAI Group to this vision for my legacy property. Every conceivable concern or issue has been addressed by them and their professional contacts. The new home and the engineering for various issues like drainage have been addressed by the best of the best in our area, Ambit Engineering. I am so confident in these organizations and I hope the members of the zoning board and my neighbors will appreciate the efforts and consideration which has been brought to bear for this concept. I know that we've had so much large development happen very quickly in Portsmouth. However, this project is a one-family home. It is tastefully designed and thoughtfully situated. It will bring tremendous value to the neighborhood, and we will welcome a new family who appreciates our exceptional proximity to downtown, the school, arts, recreation, and so much more. It is a change, but it is a positive, well-planned change. Thank you for listening and for your consideration. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, who else would like to speak in favor? Anybody else? Anybody on the Zoom call? No. No, thank you. All right. Uh, is there anyone present who would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Please come up. And if there's a lot of folks, would you sort of line up, please? And 
Speak right into the microphone, and we need everyone's uh, name and your and your address, please. Hi, my name is uh, Alex LePage. Um, this is my wife, Lauren. Uh, we live at 53 McNabb Court, which is a directed butter uh, to 405 South Street. We've lived there for two and a half years. Uh, this is our first home. Um, this is where we put down roots. Lauren's a small business owner here in Portsmouth. Uh, we recently had our first child. Uh, this is our first night away with a babysitter. Not exactly how I pictured it, but um, <laughs> we made a very concerted effort to be part of this community. Um, this has been very essential because, uh, as you can see, McNabb Court is um, more of a shared driveway uh, than a street. Um, I know some of you were there today. Um, you can see it's 90 degree dog leg, barely wide enough for two cars. Um, you can't really drive more than five miles an hour uh, to make sure that you're careful of people, um, cars, and dogs. I would also say that I've had positive interactions uh, with Julie at 405 South Street. Um, so last summer when there was a lot of activity from surveyors on her land, um, I inquired what her plans were, looking to sell or build something. Um, she indicated that she was redoing the garage and doing a survey because one hadn't been done in a long time. Fast forward to last fall, um, and there were construction crews uh, digging holes in the, the land with an uh, excavator. Um, and then we learned from approaching the construction crews that they were uh, determining the best spot to build uh, a home on the land. Um, but again, the owner did not share any information with me or my wife about this. Ten days ago, um, she contacted me with the, the plans to build the home, which she indicated was a 1,591 square foot house, along with the proposal that was submitted to the CBA. Um, she offered that we meet with her liaison from the construction company if we had any questions. Um, I say this because I know there's no law that says you have to be neighborly or share this information. It's fully within their right not to share this. But uh, I offer this because there's one line specifically in the proposal that states, the applicant has taken a conscientious approach to its development by engaging surrounding property owners to proactively address any concerns they might have. I found this to be particularly hurtful and uh, frankly dishonest uh, because we were not asked once about our concerns prior to receiving the proposal about 10 days ago. Uh, we were not involved in any way uh, in the planning or design process. And this is contrary to previous ZBA issues uh, that abut McNabb Court, uh, including uh, 125 Elman Ave, which we recently passed through here, as well as a new build um, at 88 Lincoln, uh, both of which uh, directly abut McNabb Court and were passed, which shows that this neighborhood is not against change. Furthermore, I'd argue that this particular proposal uh, is even more important than those to bring before the board because it's not an addition. It's not tearing down a house or rebuilding a house in the same spot. This is a new single family home um, that's quite larger than the other homes in the area that's at the, um, the dead end street that's uh, heavily congested already. I'd also like to highlight one other statement from the proposal which states uh, if the variances were denied, the landowner would be unable to subdivide the property, sell lot two for value, and offset her existing tax burden with the under, underutilized land in the rear. Um, as it was said, I understand that this is a very unique lot for Portsmouth. It's a lot of green space, um, but I know uh, that multiple butters throughout the years have approached the owner um, to potentially purchase the land um, to keep it as green space, and uh, none of those offers have been entertained. Um, instead, she's chosen to go this route, which is her right again, uh, but I just want to make sure that that's uh, clearly stated before the board today. And I think the fact that there's no proactive outreach to neighbors means that you're going to hear a lot of people from a lot of people um, in the community today with the, these concerns instead of potentially being discussed ahead of time um, and not taking up this board's time. Um, so now I'll invite my wife, Lauren, uh, to share some of her additional concerns. Hi, everyone. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm just going to get right into it and focus on the points that we feel are the most concerning in relation to the variances uh, they're asking for to get granted today, um, most specifically the McNabb Port frontage variance. Um, the, um, so they're asking for a 2,500 2, square foot home on 30 feet of McNabb Court. Um, I've looked at the map and I don't fully understand this request um, because the McNabb Court width of the street is only 24 feet wide. That's extra six feet is looks like it cuts right into uh, 54 McNabs, paver patio and front stairs. So I don't, so I think we're, they're really asking for 24 feet of frontage. Um, but I'm, I'm new to this. I might be ignorant about that, that request, but, um, now, the amount of frontage aside, um, the logistics of having another house on McNabb as their only way in and out of their prof properties is a safety concern to us. 
Um, as my husband mentioned, moving in and out of McNabb Court in our own driveways as it currently stands is very challenging, as those of you know who have kind of pulled in there to check it out today. Um, this um, proposed four bedroom house with a one car garage and oversized driveway that can fit four or more vehicles. I know it's, you know, explained as a turnaround, but you can kind of load that thing up with more cars. Um, and it will also be simultaneously taking away the only two on street parking spaces that McNabb Court has to utilize. Um, we can assume the new house will have visitors, deliveries, and other additional services, creating more congestion to the area. Um, more people coming and going in their vehicles is even more greater concern for the pedestrians of the area. Um, the loss of those two parking spaces also makes more people have to park as McNabb members further up McNabb or on Lincoln, creating more pedestrian tra traffic coming in and out of the street. Um, we currently have uh, multiple sets of grandparents that visit their grandchildren in these homes that will now have to walk down the street with no easement, no sidewalks <coughs> with that blind turn, um, further uh, contributing to safety. Um, we also have children that walk to school. Again, no easements or uh, sidewalks for safety, and this is going to just create further congestion. Um, next, I want to point out that our front door, where our front door is in relationship to the proposed plan, um, Currently, our steps walk right out to that, that end of that street, um, right where that driveway is planning to be. Right now, it's the end of a dead end, and it's a safety risk for our family now that we're going to have moving vehicles coming by our house. It's, you know, the nature of our home, but as far as resale value goes, that is a concern for us. Um, the... Next, this proposal makes multiple references to about how the design of the new house will fit into the, seamlessly into the neighborhood and not to affect the character. While this interpretation of character is true and this consideration is important, the essential character of this neighborhood also has to do with how the neighborhood functions. And this is going to drastically affect how we operate as a McNabb court group of people. <coughs> um, bottom line, allowing this new structure to access McNabb greatly affects McNabb residents, their children, their visitor safety, and also affects the character of the neighborhood. Um, the second piece I want to address is the water that everyone's kind of been hinting at. Um, we all have, you know, the original fieldstone basements. Water um, in the basements is a constant battle. We personally have standing water in our basement most of the time. We've um, invested in water mitigation um, basement solutions with, you know, some improvement, but still working on that. Um, and any anything developed on this land is going to affect the water in our basement, but putting in a very large home um, is going to affect that even more so. Um, that standing water that they say is a puddle can be up to a foot of standing water that sits on that whole side of that lot in the back end of the lot right next to our house. All of that water drains into the ground, comes right into our basement, goes into our sump pump. Our sump pump is working around the clock. That's currently how it is now. It, it's just the fact of that property. But anything that they do is going to affect that even more. Um, they've addressed that they're working on water solutions and, and things like that. They've been vague. I feel like they've been a little vague tonight about what those solutions are. Um, but it's a, it's a huge deal for us in our, in our current situation. Um, I think one thing that has not been touched on tonight is because of the surface area of that driveway, there's going to be more water runoff from the driveway that's now, again, it's directed right towards our house at 53 McNabb. Um, and there's been a lot of talk about snow, whether the snow is in front of my house or beside my house, it's still ending up in my basement. So we don't personally have any concerns about where the snow is. They're not really doing us any favors. So I just wanted to make note of the snow issue. Um, and I think that's all I have to say. I will Thank you. leave that off to somebody Thank else you. unless you have questions for me. Oh. Apparently not. Next, next speaker, please. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Next speaker, please. Good evening. Uh, ben Otis, 46 McNabb Court. Um, I've lived there for 16 years now, uh, raised our three boys on that street. Um, it's a very unique street in town as a dead-end street. No sidewalks, no curbing, very, very sh uh, narrow, 
you really can't park in front of your house or you're blocking the street. So one of my big concerns is parking. If, if we put a fifth house on the end of that street, um, it, it instantly gets rid of two extra parking spaces. Um, we have over 15 cars coming in and out of that street because yes, I'm one of the four houses on that street, but Lincoln and Elwyn back up to that street and access um, their garages or their driveways through McNabb Court. So I, I feel parking will be a very big impact to the neighborhood. The other thing is the water, um, which has been touched on. Uh, not just the, the water coming down, but the water coming up. Uh, this, this neighborhood has a very high water table. Uh, my sump pump runs often. Uh, you've got South Street on one side, Kent Street on the other, and it's kind of right in the valley. So um, whatever they're talking about, about just uh, runoff drainage, my other big concern is the drainage that comes from below up because the water table is so high. So, um, Thank you. I'm Kristen Trepain Otis, Ben Otis's wife, 46 McNabb Court as well. And unfortunately, I feel like a lot of words and time have been wasted tonight talking about snow. Um, in the 16 years that we've lived on McNabb Court, only once has the snow piled against this fence where this frontage is on McNabb Court. It was in the blizzard that just happened in January. And the reason why that snow was piled there was because a substitute snowplow driver came by the day before and said, where do they put the snow? And asked the neighbors and got poor information that the snow went there. The snow did go there that time. There's actually a fire hydrant right there, so the snow should not be piled there ever anyways. Typically, the snow is pulled out with a payloader and brought over to City Hall, or it's pushed to the straight end of McNabb Court to the right of our home which is part of city land to the right of us that backs up to that house that's on a back lot on um, South Street. So the, all this talk about how great it will be for this snow to be removed is a non-issue. The snow does not get pushed against that fence. It did that one day, that one time, and it has not been an issue. We, our children are getting older. They're in middle school and high school, but we chose to live on this very quiet street because of the ability for the kids to play safely in the road. Our neighbors have all been kind and we all have worked together to move our cars in and out, to park in ways that everybody can feel like they can have company and be accommodated and adding another home to the end of that street will eliminate all of that, the ability to play, the ability to be in the street, the ability to congregate as neighborhoods, or as neighbors rather, and create more traffic and more traffic jams. You wouldn't think there'd be a traffic jam, but there is a traffic jam every day on McNabb Court. Thank you. Good evening, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dan LaCava. I live at 72 Lincoln Avenue the property that directly um, abuts the, the north edge of Lot 2. Um, <clears throat> I was born and raised in Portsmouth. In fact, I was born right in this building, a couple of hundred feet above me. But uh, I've lived in this town my whole life. Uh, my house has been in my family too, so we all like to protect the legacy, and our, and our, our families have always been friendly. That is not going to change as a result of this, in, in my opinion. Um, but it's important to note that as Ben uh, indicated, we're, we're in a valley between Kent Street and South Street. So we live where the water collects. That's my biggest concern is the water. Um, and I, I don't believe they have a strong answer on where the water is going to go. So I'd like to hear what's going to go on with that. Um, another concern I have is for uh, my neighbor's children's safety. McNabb Court is a bustling place. If you've ever stopped by on an afternoon, you're going to see half the neighborhood of the, south, of the south side playing in that street. And they have to deal with cars all the time, which is just part of living. But one of the things that we should note about McNabb Court is that there's a fire hydrant on the street because you can't get a fire truck down McNabb Court. Now, what happens if we have a dwelling at the end of McNabb Court and something goes wrong during construction and the place catches on fire? We've got no access in order to get a fire truck there, right? 
You could pull the water out of the backyard. That would be effective, but you got to hope that it rains the day before. Um, so again, my big opposition is with safety. Um, also, I don't know where they're going to put the construction equipment for when they have to tear up McNabb Court to extend the drainage or change the change the plumbing. Um, I don't know where the material is going to go. Where are they going to put all the material to build that house? Where are the trucks going to park when it's time for them to spend six months building this thing, if they can get it built in six months? The house next to me took two years to get built. So uh, those are my concerns. Uh, I, I don't like to be somebody who says I don't want something done, but um, I think we have like pretty much an 80% of butter disapproval rating on this one. Um, and and the, I guess the last point would be density. I'm trying to figure out how we can say that this is not a problem about density if we're adding a new house to an area where it doesn't exist. It's making it more dense, right? So um, I ask the board to disapprove this, and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next, next speaker. Next speaker, please. So I'm a little slow here. I had hip surgery yesterday, but no, I wanted to make no, it to this year. No, no races tonight. And I am the neighbor. I'm at Alex Griner, 88 Lincoln. I am the neighbor who did take a couple years to build that Dan's referring to, although we're good friends now. <laughs> um, so I, I, Alex Griner, 88 Lincoln. I lived there with my wife, Kathleen, uh, two young daughters. Um, it, it goes without saying the tremendous appeal why anyone would want to choose. Uh, and again, we're on Lincoln Ave, but our, 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 our home is frontage is on uh, in Lincoln, but our driveway is actually off McNabb or the first driveway on the left as you turn on. Um, tons of appeal. And people, before we moved it here, as we were looking for places to live, when we mentioned we were looking at a house on Lincoln and McNabb, everybody seems to know McNabb Court. It's a very unique property. People know it for trick-or-treating and block parties and just the small, unique setting that it is has a ton of appeal. And everybody, I, I probably sound like a broken record, and people have mentioned it. It's, it's tricky. It's unique. There's no sidewalks. There's no, you know, it's, it's very narrow. But like, what a great place to raise kids and have them, uh, you know, bike and scoot around, which we're just starting to enjoy now with a three- and a six-year-old. Um, so I'm probably going to echo uh, the things that you've probably already heard tonight, you know, starting at first to read what, what Alex started off with. Uh, again, I, I don't think there's any obligation for neighbors to come to the neighbors before they come to this hearing to apply, but I, I would contest that it's definitely misrepresented that there was a conscious effort to go reach out to neighbors about this project. I, like Alex, had seen work going on there in the past and <clears throat> kind of poked around and did talk to one of the end of uh, SAI liaisons to try to find out what was going on and poke around for a little bit of information. But the next time I heard about this project when I got a letter in the mail like anybody else about 10 days ago. So there was no proactive engagement to understand neighbor concerns. And I've yet to talk to a neighbor that was reached out to proactively aside from you know the door-to-door -door -door this last week um, in advance of this hearing. Um, the other concerns they have, which you've heard, are water. So we've spent thousands of dollars. We've got a couple sump pumps going in our basement. Um, I know frequently when it's wet out, uh, we've uh, spent thousands of dollars. Uh, even though we have a nearly new construction, we did keep the old fieldstone foundation. So we deal with a lot of the water issues that you've heard about. So I'd be very concerned. Um, and it doesn't, it didn't, meet, did not give me much um, confidence the way it was presented tonight that there's any resolution to those water issues. Safety is a huge concern. Um, during the construction phase, it's such a unique uh, property, I struggle to understand all the heavy equipment, excavators, lumber, et cetera, and the constant flow of trucks that would be there during the construction phase. Again, there's, I think there's 12 kids that live just in that little court between all, all the neighbors that uh, abut that down on McNabb and also the people who have driveways, uh, the SEPAs and other folks who, who live on Elwyn but have driveways and kids play down there. And then just the ongoing, it will add more cars and more vehicles and more deliveries to a very unique, you know, small, uh, small dead end, which concerns me uh, trying to live there long term. Um, and also, I would just say too, like the just again, the street density, I think this seems to me that uh, the South Street property is unique, but they're using a tiny slice of access to McNabb as justification to put a large home effectively in somebody's backyard. So for those reasons, I'm opposed to this project. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Uh, is, are there other speakers in opposition, please? Please come up. Hello, my name is Lucinda Lloyd, and I live at 54 McNabb Court. So I am the abutter right next to the land. Um, I have the fire plug right in front of my house. And um, I came to McNabb Court being the last house on a dead end street and our neighborhood is like a Norman Rockwell picture. 
it's a, a place of a lot of community and safety about the little children that are running around. Our, our speed zone is like five miles an hour. Um, I'm worried about water in the basement. I had to have French drains put in when I came because there was standing water in the basement. And I'm the first house as you come down the hill. So as they displace all the land to build the house, the water has to go somewhere. I'm first in line. And um, the increase in traffic is a problem that I think will happen for not just the construction, but a four bedroom, two and a half bathroom house is bigger than most all of our houses on McNabb. And the size and the scale is not in proportion with what the neighborhood is. Um, having a one car garage, there's no way a four bedroom house is only gonna have one car. Um, they're gonna grow up and be teenagers and have to have their own car. Um, I think my neighbors have said most of the other things, but the, the variance is Excuse about- Could you speak up just a little bit, please? The variance thank, is- Thank you. About the frontage is right in front of my front stoop, and that's where the fire plug is. There isn't hardly 30 feet there. It will take away between Alex as my front yard. Uh, enough said. Thank you. Thank you. Other, uh, other speakers, please, please come forward. Hi. Thank you. <coughs> I assume this is the mic you want me to talk into? Yes, that, that would be great. Marvelous. Can everyone hear me? Great. Uh, my name is Ryan Russman. I live at 137 Elwyn Avenue, and I actually am one of the uh, property owners who has access to his garage on the back side of this property. In fact, the house next to me also has access to their garage on the back side of this property. So when we talk about the actual area that is being used for the egress of this property, you're going to, or this road, excuse me, you're going to have to also take into consideration those houses that are on Elwyn Avenue, including um, the, the realtor who, who spoke in uh, support of this particular uh, discussion. So I want to talk to you about this particular street, not necessarily about the water, because I think that's been really well covered. But I do want to talk to you about parking and about actually the, how the roadway is laid out. Now, this is this the is this the little device that shows you if you, if you hold it, it'll hold. The, I'm holding it in the top button. Three years, four years of, <laughs> of college, and three years of law school. I can't seem to use this thing. Um, can I walk up to it? I speak really if, loud. If you, if, you so, if you grab the portable mic the there, line. you can. Awesome. Can you hear me now? There you go. I feel like I'm a comic. Um, I wish I was funny, but I'm not. But what I want to tell you guys is this, that here's McNabb Court. This is uh, my driveway down here. And so what happens is you, you, they're all talking about plows. Well, if they actually lived on our street, they talked to us, they knew what they were talking about, which they don't, they know that they don't use a plow on this street. They use a backhoe. And if you know anything about a backhoe, I know you're a realtor, so maybe you've done construction. It actually has a large claw off the back, and so when you swing that, you're actually going to have to make this corner and this corner much more challenging, which means if they intend to put a plow down here as the backhoe, which is what they use, makes this corner, the back end of that device is actually going to swing across this way. In addition to that, what's also going to happen is when we have a snow placement here, what they're also not talking about is that they salt our road. Um, I was born and raised in New Hampshire. Uh, we still put sand and salt on the road. And so when the snow melts, the water with the snow also is pressed into the land. There's something called riparian rights. It's a silly legal word, but it talks about how water topography works. And so the, the difficulty here is that if their intention is to move snow, and to put it here like it's somehow saving us, you're actually gonna be killing everybody's grass on the back side of this because I happen to live here. And guess what? This is where they put most of the snow. It's a huge pile of snow if you were there. My kids sled on it, they love it. But the problem is, you can't grow grass there. Every summer, Ben and I, we have to put new grass down because guess what happens? It all gets killed. So the solutions that they're coming up with in terms of trying to uh, mitigate the snow situation aren't necessarily found in logic. Now, the other thing you don't know about me is I, I was a volunteer fireman. So probably I'm, I'm guessing I'm probably the only one in this room that's actually driven a fire truck. 
Maybe there's some of the people who haven't, but I have. Now, Portsmouth is getting a new 100-foot rear mount ladder. It's a platform truck. It's monstrous. I'd love to see how they're going to make this corner. It's a platform truck, and if you're going to put a multi-story house here, one of the things you want to do is vent the roof because fire has to be isolated by putting a vent through. It's a firefighting tactic, and I don't necessarily need to understand that. But the idea is that's the device they're going to use. Good luck making that corner. So the other issue that I guess I have with this project is that there was really no discussion. You know, I'm a lawyer. Conflict is my business. But if you are in a neighborhood this small, wouldn't you want to have at least some consultation? There was none. And agreed, they don't have to. But here's the interesting thing. Had they talked to us, or if they'd even approached me, I would have said, look, you want a tax benefit? There's actually a way to do it without making a house lot. You could potentially have this property subdivided, sell a conservation. Mr. Russman, please address the board. I apologize. Not, I, not the audience. I apologize. Thank I just you. was directing because I, I wanted them to know. This, this way. But I totally understand. So my point is that there are alternatives to this particular property that can be done. In fact, what would be great is if they did do a conservation easement because as they discussed, there's a large vegetable garden here. Wouldn't it be great to have a community vegetable garden here? Well, guess what? There's plenty of space. It gets great sun. It would do a wonderful thing. She would pay less taxes. She could get actually a payment for this, and it solves some of that problem. There are alternative solutions here. So I appreciate the, the, the performance that was put on by council. They, they did an excellent job addressing the prongs of these, these circumstances. But at the end of the day, they're asking for a egress and ingress of 24 feet, folks. I will tell you that that's far different than 100 foot. It's not even half. It's not even a third. It's really a quarter of what the frontage would be necessary here. That's an enormous change in the property. Lastly, I'll tell you this, that there are multiple kids that live in this neighborhood. I have two of them. We all have dogs, oddly enough. And because we live in Portsmouth, and we all know that this small area, congested area, guess where the kids play ball? Because we don't have backyards. Here. What's interesting about it is this is trail that somehow there is this great relationship with all of us as neighbors. I, there's a fence here. When balls and things go over the yard, the kids get yelled at. So the fact is that if you now put a street with more cars on here, you're actually going to make this stretch of road even more dangerous. And it is absolutely true. The neighborhood pours into here. And the reason why is because it's dead end here and it's dead end here. Parents on Elwood Avenue don't have to worry about the kids playing in the street because there isn't the kind of traffic out there. So for the reasons that I've stated, I think that there are multiple ways that this process can be reviewed, and in fact, they could come back at it with another proposal, but the variants that have been proposed, I'll come back to the mic, the variances that have been asked for are extraordinary. The care that they've taken to address the community has been poor, and the reality is that the ask in this case, the ask is for 100 foot down to 24 feet is enormous. They haven't given any due consideration to this, and if they'd actually gone to the property, talked to the public works, they would know how the <coughs> road was plowed. They would have some understanding of the issues in terms of riparian rights and the water problems that we all have, but that was never done. And if you would like rebuttal, then I would like sir rebuttal. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, please. Wow, I'd say I have bad timing to go after him, but um, <laughs> I am Nina Fox Herlihy. I'm the owner of 60 Lincoln Avenue, but I live at 55 Lang Road and Rye. I am going to repeat some of the things that were said, not all of them, but I was surprised when on page four of the Durban Law Letter, it also said that the applicant had been um, had taken a conscientious approach to the um, development of engaging surrounding property owners. I was never contacted. As many others have said, they were never contacted. I first heard about this also from receiving the letter about this meeting. I understand it's not a legal, a legal thing that they have to do, but then it shouldn't be stated by their lawyer in a letter that it was done. That's misleading and not true. I don't know if it's customary for a builder to contact finally a Butters, of which I am, on the north side next to the La Cava's on Lincoln Ave. 
I don't know if it's customary to contact a Butters literally less than a week before this neighbor, this meeting, to ask them if they have any concerns. To me, timing is everything, and that timing is way off. <clears throat> I've, I've crossed a lot of things off as I've listened to other people to make this shorter. I, too, have water problems existing now. Um, <clears throat> the, the property that, line, that is at the bottom, the bottom of this field lines up against my back, my back area, and it has not a puddle, but oftentimes in heavy rains or after snows and thaws, it actually has a pool of standing water. This happens in the summer, too, which increases a health risk because of standing water and mosquitoes. Um, I haven't lived on McNabb Court, so I did just learn about the backhoe, but I was, I was concerned with the, the possibility of pushing more liquid into the middle of the field to then melt down and continue to increase the probability of our basements being flooded. Again, we're in a low area. It comes right down Kent Street, right into my cellar. I have two sump pumps. I have French drains. So I could not see, I mean, I had my magnifying glass out, first of all, with the plans, the writing's so small. I'm sure some of you can see that problem. Trying to figure out where the drainage was they were talking about. I don't see it. Um, I don't see any hydrology studies. And Ambit may have done it, but I don't see them in, anywhere in the plan. Um, and, and I just think this plan, you know, they're saying that it's being addressed. I'm uncomfortable having a variance passed to move this property forward until there is drainage issues and solutions in place. We are going to incur increased hardship at the expense of having to do more to our basements if water continues. It's going to come off those roads right down that hill. It affects the houses on McNabb Court. It affects us very much at the bottom. Um, there was also, I, I will go back to that. Um, so again, I, I think drainage solutions and remedies should be in place before any variances are passed. I too have concern about safety on McNabb Court, although it doesn't affect me directly. Um, this is, I am part of that neighborhood with people passing by. Um, I lived there for many years before I got married and moved to Rye, and I have hopes of someday, either the both of us or in the worst case scenario, me moving back to age and place in that house. So this is very much of a concern and a long-term concern. I bought my house in 1989. I've been there a long time. I've owned it a long time. I believe neighbors have a right to make changes to their properties. And this is shown by the fact that if you look back, I did not have one grievance or complaint about variances with the property at 54 Lincoln Ave when it was built. It is literally a driveway away from my house. The changes they proposed were reasonable. The new owners were forthcoming. They drove out to Rye with their plans before they even started to do anything, and we talked. Yes, um, I did. It impacted my views of the park, both in the front and the back. But it did not cause any potential structural or safety issues to my property and others in the neighborhood, like the subdivision of 405 South Street does. I think the proposed subdivision impacts the entire neighborhood and in Butters in a negative way. The only one that I see it does not affect negatively is the owner, who, who I've had very pleasant dealings with over the years, um, who wants to subdivide it. Um, Durbin um, mentioned that abutting proper, properties, I believe he said on Lincoln Ave, have garage. I do not have a garage. I am one of the two direct abutters on Lincoln Ave, and the look office has always struck me as a shed. It houses a motorcycle. 
So I'm not sure what they, again, are referring to. I feel there's been a lot of inaccuracies, a lot of poor handling of this whole plan, um, lack of transparency, and I, I, ask, I ask that, that before any variances are granted that these drainage and other impacts, safety on, for children and, and residents and narrow, I mean, McNabb Court's not even a road, it's tiny. I, I ask that before variances are granted for this project, all these things are considered and remedied. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Nick, are there any more speakers? Yes? Come up, please. I'll make this very brief. My name is Brandon Seppa. I'm at 151 L1 Ave. Um, so my, my property abuts L1 Ave on the front and McNabb Court on the back. Um, so it is actually my yard into which all of the piled snow piles uh, every year. And actually, we love it, uh, for the record. Uh, my kids play on it constantly when they come home from school. For the record, I too was not consulted um, as any part of the planning process here. I just want to put a finer point on the discussion about safety. Uh, it was mentioned there are actually 11 children uh, in that very short stretch. Some of you, it sounds like you visited the property, the, the street today or yesterday. That very sh short stretch, only a few hundred feet, there are actually 11 children on that stretch, only three of which are older than 13, okay? No sidewalks. No curb, nothing like this, right? We, in fact, during the summer months, uh, some of us strategize in the neighborhood about placing temporary bollards in the street to slow the delivery vehicles, to create obstacles, to force them to slow down, particularly as they take that, that 90 degree turn that's completely blind, right? So, um, and as Mr. Russman said Wait, about- Please address the, the board. Oh, uh, Okay, I was just, I'm no, sorry, I was just yeah, gesturing for Mr. Russman. Please address us. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So a, as Mr. Russman said, uh, a fire truck would struggle to get down the road and turn around. Understand that even delivery vehicles, like Amazon delivery vehicles, which are designed to balance capacity with turning radius, can't turn around on McNabb Court. In fact, Mr. Russman uh, built <coughs> a new driveway recently in his yard uh, that was crushed by such a delivery vehicle not too long ago because the vehicle was struggling to turn around. So I'm struggling to understand, and granted I'm not an expert in construction, uh, how earth movers, ditch diggers, concrete vehicles, et cetera, are going to safely move up and down McNabb Court to see this construction through. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else? Any, any final, final call? Okay, come up please. Hi, uh, Alex LePage from 53 McNabb. I have two letters from um, additional abutters uh, who weren't able to be here. Is it okay if I read those now? Uh, I hope uh, they're fairly short. <laughs> I'll make them as short as I can. Yes, thank, um, thank you. The first is from Patricia Cabrera at 113 Elwyn Ave. Um, I would like to express my concerns about the proposal to subdivide the lot on 405 South Street to build a house at the end of McNabb Court. My backyard directly abuts McNabb Court. My first concern is the effect the house would have on the water table. My house is at the lowest point on Elwyn Ave. My basement has never been dry, but gets flooded much more quickly in the, in the past few years. My sump pump runs more often than not. Lot two is very wet, and the weight of a house will only cause the water table to rise. Uh, the house's proposed uh, is much bigger than the four houses on McNabb. It would cause our extremely high taxes to go up even more. A new house would change the character of the street and add more traffic. There's a number of small children who ride their bikes and scooters. More cars means more chances of a child getting hit. This next letter is from Greg uh, Sullivan and Stephanie Sullivan who live at 43 McNabb Court. Um, I quote, uh, our property is diagonally um, across from the proposed new property at 405 South Street. We're out of town for this meeting. Um, but would like the following to be submitted and incorporated for the record of the meeting. We are vehemently opposed to, to the request for the continuous street frontage to allow 30 continuous street frontage on McNabb Court where 100 is required, and the rear yard setback to allow a 15.6 rear yard setback where 20 is the minimum required. For the following reasons. Um, as part of Section 10.120, the ordinance states um, it is intended to implement the goals and objectives of the master plan by regulating the intensity of land use, including lot sizes, building coverage, building height and bulk, yards and open space. These four identical New Englanders houses uh, on McNabb Court were built between 1900 and 1910 and were built very close together. One of the purposes of the zoning ordinance of the 1960 requirements was to uh, require minimum lot dimensions to allow more open space between houses. This request is re to reduce the dimensions further to constrict the, constrict the open space in our neighborhood. 
The applicant states that granting the, for number two, the applicant states that granting the frontage variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood and further states the home and related features will fit naturally into the context of the surrounding neighborhoods. As can be seen from the three photos the applicant has included in their proposals, 11 of the 12 New Englander houses were immediately surround the, the proposed house are quaint New Englander style homes uh, that are three bedroom with 1.5 bathrooms. The proposed uh, house is a modern four bedroom, 2.5 bathroom with attached garage that would, would alter the essential character of the McNabb neighborhood and not fit naturally within the surrounding McNabb neighborhood. Uh, the proposal states that the house is a four bedroom, 1.5 bathroom. That's been discussed already, so um, I know that was a mistake that Mr. Durbin mentioned. Um, but a house this big will likely cause more occupants um, than to have just one car. Uh, three of the four existing houses on McNabb Court each have two cars. There are also two houses on Elwyn Ave that each have access to their garages and driveways via McNabb Court. Um, one of these houses has a driveway for four cars. McNabb Court is a very narrow street with a 90 degree turn to get to the houses, add delivery trucks, contractors, and guests, and the street is already subject to heavy traffic and very limited parking. In addition to the increased traffic from the proposed home, this proposal also eliminates one of the four parking spots used for McNabb Court guests. Uh, again, uh, according to part of Section 10.120 of the Zoning Ordinance, um, the design of facilities for vehicular access, circulation, parking, and loading, um, adding another house with multiple cars will further exacerbate the traffic, wear and tear on the road, and further reduce the available parking spaces for guests. Uh, number four, the applicant subjectively states having a garage is almost, um, almost viewed as essential given the harsh winters. Only five of the 12 surrounding houses have a garage. Winters are getting less harsh due to climate change. Five, due to the slope of the property and lack of drainage, a small pond develops at the base of the lot and the surrounding neighbor's yards. Uh, after every heavy rainstorm, the water seeps into the ground and triggers our sump pump to run every few minutes for a day and sometimes more, depending on the amount of rainfall. Uh, it is even worse in the spring when the snow pile at the end of McNabb Court from the winter's plowing melts. Once again, on uh, the zoning ordinance, uh, the impacts on the properties of outdoor lighting, noise, noise vibration, stormwater runoff, and flooding. Um, Building this house will displace water to surrounding properties, which could cause flooded basements, increased electrical bills, and additional wear and tear on our sump pumps. Uh, number six, in the winter, because McNabb Court is so narrow, a dead end um, with a 90 degree turn to get to the houses, the DPW can't use a standard plow uh, because the street is too narrow and there's no easy way to turn around. They use a small front end loader to plow the street. The driver pushes the snow to the end of the street, backs out, and continues to make several passes until the street is wide enough for cars. Uh, on page three of the proposal, the applicant states, Location of the proposed home and garage will allow for the city to plow um, snow down McNabb Court. This ra raises a number of concerns. Um, this assumes that the new property owner and a future, future owner will agree to this. This assumes the city driver will know that he or she is allowed to push the snow to this location, and there's no assurances to the McNabb Court residents that the new owners and any future owners will agree to this. Um, this, is, this review is to approve the request uh, for variance at 405 South Street. What is not being factored in are the previous variance approvals for 88 Lincoln Ave, which abuts the north side of our house. Uh, the approved variance is for 125 Elwyn Ave, which abuts the west side of our house. Approving this variance on the east side of our house would further encroach on the properties of McNabb Court and reduce our open space. Uh, just two more. Um, the applicant states the light, air, and space of the property on 393 South Street will not be negatively impacted by the garage. However, the light, air, and space on the properties on McNabb Court will be negatively impacted. The sunrise for the east that we can currently see every morning uh, and the view from Langdon Park will be blocked by the house and the garage. Uh, and the applicant claims in the property uh, in the proposal that they have taken a conscious approach to, to development by engaging surrounding property owners uh, to proactively address any concerns they may have. Uh, we have not been contacted by anyone during this uh, development of the proposal. The first contact we had was the better notice of this two weeks ago. It wasn't until five days ago, or three business days, that the applicant started to contact our neighbors. So finally, for the reasons cited above, we do not believe this new home will be in the public interest of the residents of McNabb Court. Uh, we believe the design of the house will negatively alter the essential character of the McNabb Court neighborhood. We believe the building a house with a garage will result in unnecessary hardship. Flooding reduce parking and traffic constriction, reduce light, air, and space to the residents of McNabb Court. Therefore, do we, we do not believe the applicant has met the five criteria for granting the variances and request that the Zoning Board of Adjustment deny or reject these variance requests. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any, anyone else to speak in opposition? Yeah. Before we go, just before we go, anyone else in opposition before we go to the last call? Anyone else in opposition? Anyone, Mr. Stith on the... No one on the Zoom call. No one on the Zoom calls, all right. Uh, okay, we're going to close that aspect of it, and we'll go to the last call, which is two for or against, by which case anyone can come up, and please, and, and we especially welcome uh, new information. 
uh, two, four are against and no time limit, but please be succinct and particularly if you have new information, we appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, my name is Derek Rolf and I live at 419 South Street. We um, directly are bought Julie's property. Um, and I'll try to be as short as I can on this one. Um, We've been there for 20 years, and I believe when we originally moved in, Julie's mother and her brother had lived in the house. Um, and then since then, Julie has taken occupancy of it. Um, and you heard her story of her family having the house for generations, and I believe that's her hope for the property. Uh, she had once said to me years ago that she would sell the property over her dead body. Um, so I think that she has reached a point where she has no other choice, and she's hoping to maintain the house and her family. Um, and I'm hoping that there's some solution we can find for her to do it. Um, but you've also heard from a lot of neighbors around there that have some very legitimate concerns. Uh, you heard a lot about the water. Um, I don't need to go into that. I think you've got the sense for how bad that is. Um, but they have real legitimate concerns. And I'm hoping that there's some remediation that can be found um, to address those concerns. Possibly having a third party come in and validate any solutions that it won't make the situation worse for any of the surrounding homes. So good. Thank you. Thank you. Two for or against? Two for or against? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, again, for the record, Attorney Derek Durbin representing the applicant. Um, I'll just briefly touch upon a couple of larger themes. Um, the first, access safety, um, getting to the property. Um, I know there's been a lot of um, testimony before the board about that. Um, again, I think there's a common misperception here is that um, this is a dead end street. You can't use that under McNabb Court. You know, we can, we have legal parking at the end of the street, all that. Um, that all exists because my client has a fence there. Um, my client could remove the fence, could use that as access, could construct, again, a structure of similar dimension to what she's proposing now, or construct any other type of driveway access in there. Of course, there's going to be input from public works, same as there is here. Um, in fact, I know it was stated that we must not have um, had any input from Public Works. Clearly identified to the board before this has been through a TAC work session. There has been input from Public Works. Public Works would like to see the snow um, taken into the left. Um, this is the, the reason, the entire reason the garage was, we're asking for a rear yard setback is to create that turning radius in that's safe and to be able to turn back out and drive back down McNabb Court. Um, so these concerns have been addressed. I know um, John Shagnon would like to speak sp more specifically about the safety issues associated with the access, um, emergency vehicle access, and, and things of that nature. Drainage, I'll let John address as well. And I know um, Patrick Nystam from SAI Builders would like to speak. I do take some exception. It seems that a statement um, from my narrative has been taken somewhat out of context. I don't need to go tit for tat on that. Um, but I was speaking to um, the other projects in the South End and saying that we take a conscientious, conscientious approach to um, development. Um, they, they do, and they will be addressing the concerns proactively. We're not even close to a development stage here. We're at a preliminary stage seeking zoning relief where the technical concerns will be addressed. So, um, so for those reasons, um, I'll, I'll turn it over to uh, John unless there are any other questions for me. Um, open space is just the last thing. I mean, this idea that, that we're creating something that's denser and, and limiting open space is just simply not true. I mean, it, we're meeting well exceeding open space requirements. They're talking about open space as in the, the, they've enjoyed in, in the backyard. Um, but again, we could put a structure out there in a driveway. That, that's by right. So. Um, I'll turn it over to John if you'd like to speak, or Patrick Nystam, if I could. Uh, good evening, board members. Um, on behalf of SAI, I want to thank you for the uh, opportunity to uh, present this case uh, before you this evening. Uh, your name, please, sir, for the record? Uh, Patrick Nystam from okay. SAI Builders. Thank you. Um, I know it's late, and I'm cognizant of your time, so I'll, I just want to respond to a few comments. Um, this evening, you heard uh, several about us say that um, uh, we didn't address uh, any uh, about our concerns. Uh, when we first uh, started with this project, uh, as Derek pointed out, we were uh, proposing a house to be situated on the northerly uh, portion of the lot, uh, pretty much where the uh, lot number is, uh, lot two. And um, when we did uh, soil testing there, uh, several of the abutters that came 
uh, to speak tonight um, uh, came out and met with us on site. They were uh, inquiring as to what was going on, and they voiced some concerns about drainage and water and about a house being sited in that particular location. Um, we took those concerns, we collaborated with our engineer, and we actually, even though we had a house fully designed by an architect uh, to be placed there, we actually went back to the drawing board, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and redesigned a house to be on the southerly side of the lot, which uh, for those of you who saw the lot, it's higher topography. So we heard those concerns and we acted uh, accordingly. Um, so um, uh, the other uh, issue I'd like to just touch upon is the uh, dimensional attributes of the lot. Um, you know, it's 11,000 square feet, which is, uh, you know, certainly one of the largest uh, lots in the area. And I realize we're asking uh, for two variances, but um, uh, in the you know context of the neighborhood, uh, in many respects, this lot is more compliant uh, than many of the nearby properties in terms of uh, you know areas. I pointed out setbacks, lot coverage, and it will have parking. Um, you know we heard traffic concerns. Um, I just want to point out that we're going to have uh, on-site parking for this house. Um, uh, but I do want to remind the board that this is a public street. So, um, you know, I think uh, a potential uh, abutter there, a p potential house there has as much right to McNabb Court as uh, anyone else. Um, as far as the snow storage, uh, we heard somebody say that, you know, basically we didn't know what we were talking about. Those were recommendations that came from the city. Um, I believe it was DPW I attended a TAC meeting. And um, if they want us to provide an easement for snow storage, then we will do that. But that was clearly a city recommendation. And um, I think you know, some of the comments uh, related to uh, public safety. Um, if, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, one last comment, if somebody could just scroll to the actual uh, elevations of the house, the front of the house. Right there, that, thank you. So if you look at the uh, upper, um, uh, left quadrant. Uh, the architect uh, that designed this house is the same architect that did our Elwin and Rockland projects. We've had uh, very uh, nice feedback from both the local neighborhood and uh, from some city officials as to the final product as to how they, how these houses integrated into an existing neighborhood. And this will be no exception. If you look at the you know main body of the house, uh, it's very emblematic of the houses that are on McNabb. Um, you know, it's got the farmer's porch in the front. Uh, the massing and scaling of, of the main body is similar. Uh, we have plenty of land area where we could have put it, where we could have put a two car garage, but we try to keep it uh, modest and, and fairly consistent with the houses uh, that are on McNabb. So, um, uh, you know, I'm sure that if this project is approved, uh, it'll culminate in a house that's uh, uh, compatible with and complementary uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, and with that said, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from the board? No, apparently not. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Next, next speaker, please. <clears throat> yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know it's late. Uh, just wanted to state that the, uh, the uh, process of uh, bringing this technically forward with the city Technical Advisory Committee, the, the subdivision process that goes through that group and then to the Planning Board uh, is one that is going to be um, robust and we will be dealing with the concerns about drainage. Um, I think one of the speakers mentioned uh, uh, extra eyeballs on the project. That's what you get when you go through that group. There's the uh, police, fire, and uh, public works departments that will be there uh, with uh, eyeballs on the project. And we plan to uh, bring a project that is not going to cause any additional burden to the existing situation in, in the neighborhood. Um, there are uh, some pumps that run, and we can see that. They dump onto the applicant's property. Um, currently, and uh, as mentioned, we've designed this whole project to keep that area open uh, to receive the water from the neighborhood. I think uh, 
there's a lot of concern the, about the dead-end street. It's still going to be a dead-end street. I think at the end of the day, change is difficult, and there's been a lot of talk about the close-knit neighborhood <clears throat> and the dead-end street and the sort of the community there. I think adding one more um, family to the neighborhood is not going to change the dynamic. It's still going to be a dead end. There's just going to be one more family whose kids play in the street and so on and so forth, and they're going to be just as careful about driving down the street as the people that live there now. Thank you. Thank you. Last co Anybody else? Uh, uh, I have question, questions of question, the engineer. Mr. Shagan? Yeah. Ms. Majerson. John, just a, a couple of questions. So you've had a preliminary view in front of TAC, and I know that police and fire and DPW sit on that. What has fire said uh, so far about this proposal? So they have not raised any concerns uh, about the proposal. Um, they were fine with it. They, they didn't say that there needed to be studies of vehicle movements or traffic uh, uh, getting uh, apparatus down there. I think the as mentioned, somebody mentioned the, the hydrant at the end of the street, and um, they didn't ask for additional firefighting measures. Um, I think that hydrant at the end is a good thing. It provides for the safety of um, the homes that are there in this future home. And in terms of one of the abutters spoke about the frontage actually being 24 feet and some of it actually being on um, being on another property. Yeah, so that's a good point. I think if you turn to the um, the amount of frontage is 30 feet. Uh, what happens is that the um, the right of way for McNabb Court, the public portion uh, on the south side cuts very close to the porches so that uh, for example I think that's 54 they have a landscape area and steps that are in the public right-of-way so the 30 feet is the public right-of-way the 24 feet is the area of pavement that exists within that public right-of-way so it's 30 feet of frontage uh, and the driveway extension is going to be that 24 feet, but it doesn't mean that there's less than 30 feet of frontage. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Question also? Yes, Ms. Marges. I'm not sure you're the right person to ask this to, but um, among the many concerns was moving construction vehicles back and forth, really large trucks. How is that going to work? Do you not see that as a particularly difficult in this situation? Uh, I don't know if particularly difficult is the right word, but yes, an imposition temporarily on the neighborhood, yes. Uh, you know, and that's what happens with construction. I'm not the expert. Uh, I don't know if the builder wants to talk about it, but uh, I'm sure there's ways that they can work with the neighborhood to try to minimize the impact of construction. But Okay. You know, whenever you have construction, if one of these homes was to be remodeled, they'd have the same issue with people having to park their vehicles to work on the house in the street and so and, on. And, so and that's true. Yeah. Okay. But you're digging a foundation, so that's a little more. But you're right. Yeah. There would be vehicles. Yeah, they might have to uh, drop the low boy on uh, the straight part of McNabb Court, drive the backhoe over, you know, uh, so as not because they're not going to be able to uh, drop the uh, vehicle right at the lot. Uh, they might uh, employ things like that where they're uh, sort of driving to the site and not trying to unload at the site. Now, getting the construction, the concrete truck, yeah, that's going to be one issue that uh, I think it's going to make the turn. Uh, the something that happens twice during construction and then then it's mostly just uh, and you have a lumber truck so um, it'll have to be staged appropriately you might have smaller deliveries more smaller deliveries instead of what you would like to do which we deliver the whole first floor at one time but they'll find a way I think okay thank, thank you. you okay last call 
Two for or against? Any more speakers at all? Last call, last call. Can you address something? Yes, certainly, yes. Again, Nina Herlihy. Unless I misunderstood, um, Patrick Nyan just said that he spoke with the two property owners on the north side, which would be the LaCavas and myself, and neither one of us was spoken to him by him. I don't know who he spoke to, but it was not one of the owners. Um, unless I misunderstood him, it wasn't us. All right, thank you. I can respond to that. Um, I spoke with, uh, when we did the test pits, I spoke with, I didn't say on the north side, by the way, but I spoke with Mr. LePage, who's the director of Butter. Um, I believe I spoke with um, Lucinda, I don't remember her, her last name, and I spoke to the gentleman that just uh, built the large house at the corner of uh, Lincoln and McNabb, number 88. These, these folks uh, came to the property uh, inquiring as to what's going on, and we had some conversations, not only with myself, but I believe uh, uh, John or, or somebody from Ambit Engineering was there, as well as my construction manager and the property owner was there as well. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right. Uh, any, any, Mr. Stith, anybody on Zoom? Uh, no one has raised their hand. No one has raised their hand. Okay. <laughs> any last call? Speaking of raising it, anybody? Anybody? Last call? Yes. Okay. The, you'll you'll be the last speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> Lucinda Lloyd, 54, McNabb. No one has even mentioned tonight that lot one and lot two originate on South Street. Why couldn't access be through South Street? Why does McNabb even have to be dealt with? There's bigger frontage on South Street that could be a shared easement of driveway to make it go down. And it just doesn't seem like you need to even affect McNabb, come through a different access, a larger, bigger road is South Street. All right, is anybody on the, on the team want to design, want to address that? You don't have to. Uh, I, I think that uh, the grade change would, would be difficult to do that. Uh, the applicant would have to take out their garage, which just stands in the way. And at the end of the day, you would, it would require a much more paved area, which would be much more runoff. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, this is the, <laughs> the really the last call. All right. <laughs> okay. We're, thank you. Uh, you're, not get, you're not getting another break. <laughs> <laughs> so got the small All side. right. Okay, uh, board, we've had an extensive discussion here. Does someone want to? <clears throat> I have a question for you, Mr. Chairman. Pl please. Uh, on issues of drainage and mitigation, uh, is that our remit or is that the remit of the technical advisory Any, committee? Anybody can present anything to us that they want. And it's a public session and we can, we can take it as for what it's worth. We, ha we have to consider everything that we hear, yes. Is that one of our criteria? Depends on how you look at it. Probably not, specifically, yeah. But we can, we can consider anything we hear. Because this is a public session, yeah. Okay, Ms. Margerson. Um, I, you know, I, I, this is a, a tough application. I think Attorney Durbin did an absolutely outstanding job with uh, the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of areas where you could say that this property has special conditions. It's, it's sort of landlocked. Um, it's clearly built uh, large enough to build on. Um, however, I, I will not support this application. Um, I think that the that 30 street frontage, I think probably is maybe workable on another street other than McNabb. Um, I do have a lot of familiarity with this street. Um, I, I think it's just much too difficult uh, to make the, the such a diminution. I mean, I do note that the street frontages on McNabb for the four little New Englanders there are also very, very, uh, do not meet zoning. Um, I think that they are challenging too. Um, however, I think that placing a 30 foot street frontage in this particular area 
at the end of this block is is um, just too difficult. I think that um, there is a health safety, public health safety and welfare issue. Um, I think there is an issue with the character of the neighborhood, which is that little, those four little New Englanders. Um, so I, I will not be supporting this application, um, although I do recognize that this is a very unique situation for this lot in back of the primary lot on South Street. Um, you know, I think that if there were access off of South Street, perhaps some sort of surface that would um, not create as much drainage, um, it, it might work. Um, but I think off of McNabb, it's, it's just too difficult. Thank you. Uh, any other preliminary comments from anyone? Yep, Mr. Lee. So <clears throat> I'm kind of side with this margin on this. I'm a little conflicted on the, a lot of these points. And I thought back several times in my real estate career when I've been showing houses to people who are looking at property and you go into a really unique situation and you look around and you say, good grief, what were they thinking when they built this? And I think McNabb Court qualifies as one of those. What were they thinking when they did this? It's a really, as she said, a constricted little neighborhood. And I, I think that uh, I would fall on the side of the uh, not, not meeting all the criteria for a variance, and I, I won't be supporting the application either. All right. Uh, other, other initial <coughs> comments from anybody? No. OK. Is, uh, is anyone uh, ready with a, if there's not more uh, discussion on the, on the, in general, is there a motion? Ms. Ms. Myers. Um I will move to deny um, based upon the, um, the public interest and spirit of the ordinance prongs of the criteria. Um, you know, if. Excuse a second. <coughs> yeah. Second. No, that's, I'm going to make a motion, motion and then, then motion. Yeah, I'm going to look. Okay, we can either do either way. Second. Oh, Ms. sure. Ms. I'd be Ms. happy. Ms. Elvis, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Whatever it is. I'm I thought that's what you had. I thought you <laughs> were <what you laughs> signal that. No, sir. <laughs> thank you. Get the vapors. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Mudd. So I think that this uh, <clears throat> this variance relief uh, violates the public interest and uh, spirit of the ordinance, and that I think that it meets it violates both. Um, they're in the alternative, but. Uh, I believe that it would alter the essential character of the neighborhood, which is essentially those four little New Englanders. Um, very small lot sizes, very small houses generally around there. And I think that there is a threat to public health, safety, or welfare. So um, I will, uh, that is my motion. The motion to deny only has to identify that one of the criteria is not met. So that's correct. Uh, Ms. Eldridge? And I agree and have nothing to add. Nothing add. further? Okay. Anybody, anybody, Mr. Mantle. I'll throw this out there, and, and I appreciate the presentation um, and all the comments, both for and against. Um, it is a unique lot for Little Harbor, although I can show you a dozen of these exact same lots on Middle Road, bowling alley lots, they, from what I understand, it be called. Um, as much as the house and the development is fine, and I got no problem with that. I can't get over giving you know a variance from street frontage that 70 percent. It that just doesn't fly, and I know the property is unique, but turning a hundred hundred foot street frontage down to 70 is just too far for me. So I will be supporting the motion to deny. All right. Thank you. Any. <clears throat> Anybody else, any comments on the, on the motion before we go to the vote? Anybody, everybody, everybody ready to take a vote? Okay, the motion is to deny. And I'll start down the uh, left here, I guess, with Mr. Rossi. So a yes is denying, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes, all right, all right. And Ms. Eldridge? Yes. Yes. Okay, and Ms. Margeson? Yes. Okay, and moving down the row, uh, Mr. Lee? Uh, reluctant, yes. Okay, yeah. and Mr. McDonald? Yes. And Mr. Mannell? Yes. And I also vote yes. So the motion to deny passes, that's unanimous, and that's where we stand on this one. 
No new motion to pass ten. You know, do you. new business at ten o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I'll wait. I'm going to wait till they clear up. Yeah. We do. Peter, do you learn how to use this thing? I know. I'll be quick, I, I promise. We we'll adjust it to the, our time <laughs> limits, you know. Well, it's just three minutes on there, but I know we, we do we, five. We know we use used. Yeah. I agree. I, I agree. No, get that loud. What's that? Yeah. Move. Just move. If you could leave there. If you could leave quickly, folks, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. We, we, we have another one to go. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the volume really helps there. Uh, yes, it does. Okay. Would you like me to start? Or? Uh, for, former chairman used to say our favorite uh, petition of the evening. The last one. The last one. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully this one's not as complicated. <laughs> uh, my name is Brian Fritz, uh, 169. Uh, wait, wait, we have to just let me, uh, let me do the formalities here. Sure. We read you into the... Uh, vote to go past time. And we got a... <clears throat> And we're past uh, ten, our 10 o'clock rules, so we normally have to take a vote to acknowledge that we uh, will uh, deal with, we'll start a new one after 10, and it's one off well after 10, so. Okay. So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Ag agreed? Yes. Most yes. Voice for you? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Thank you. All done. Thank you. Does that mean yes? I can yes. go? <laughs> no, let me, let me. Uh, it's a last question. Yes. <laughs> Did you notice? <laughs> so, so ahead of us. the last. Uh, let me read into the record the uh, last uh, uh, petition of the evening is the request of Peggy L. Morrow, owner, for property located at 139 no. Essex Avenue. We're no. Wrong one. Martha we Pierce. That. We skipped that. We're, I'm we sorry. did that one already. Oh, cripes. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, Martha. Right. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Request of Brian A. Fritz, owner, for property located at 169 Martha <laughs> Terrace, whereas relief is needed to add a second floor on the existing dwelling, which requires the following. One. A vari variance from section 10.521 to allow A, a 37-foot rear yard where 40 feet is required, and B, 14% 14 14 building coverage where 10% is the maximum. Two, a variance from section 10.321 to allow a non-conforming building or structure to be expanded, reconstructed, or enlarged without conforming to the requirements of the ordinance. Said property is located on assessor map 283 as lot 9 and lies within the single residence A district. Who speaks in favor, please? Uh, my name is Brian Fritz. I'm the owner of the property, okay. um, 169 Martha Terrace, and we're requesting a variance to add a second floor. Um, we don't have enough, apparently, coverage in the backyard. Uh, the property line is actually angled, so as it comes towards the back right corner of the house, it only ends up being 37 feet from the property line. Uh, where 40 feet is needed, and I guess the other problem is that there's 14% coverage that already exists on the property, and we're not going to change that. We just wanted to put a second floor on. Um, short story, uh, I was born and raised here myself. I love Portsmouth. Uh, five years ago, I met my wonderful wife. We just had two children. We had the second one in September, and... Obviously, a very small, it's one of these very small ranches in town, and it's become very tight with two children. So the hope was to put a second floor on so that we could just put the bedrooms all together upstairs and have a little extra room for a little larger kitchen and stuff like that on the first floor. Um, pretty much we're the last house in the neighborhood that has, hasn't done any addition. Um, so as you can see, all the other houses have either done additions or have gone up. Um, our hope is to just basically do like a colonial style, like right next door. So it would be the same style as some of the other houses in the neighborhood. So that obviously would keep the same look and everything like that. Um, and that's really it. I don't want to take too much of your time. I know it's very late. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the board? Any questions at all? None? Apparently not. Thank you. Seeing that the uh, uh, room has emptied out, do we have anyone on uh, Zoom? Mr. No. Uh, no hands have been raised. Okay. No hands are raised in the audience. Okay. All right. 
Thank you. Oh, okay. Nothing, no questions no, before I, we close I, the public hearing? No? I did have a question, but Absolutely. then I realized what it was. Okay. I was wondering if your king-size bed flew. Oh, no, that's a uh, <laughs> ceiling fan. And then I realized you in were attempt, the maybe, ceiling fan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter <Yeah>. style? <laughs> Let's see if we can set a record. Okay. Public hearing is closed. Does someone have a motion with respect to this application, please? I move to approve the variance. Thank you, uh, Mr. Submitted. Rossi. Is there a second? Second. Look at someone else. Second, Mr. Lee. Uh, We've been seconding all night. <laughs> I, can, I can withdraw it. Let's all right, Mr. Like Mandel's got it. All right. okay, the basis Mr. of Rossi. my motion is that uh, the uh, lot is already non-compliant and that the suggested variance does not uh, affect that in any way whatsoever. Uh, there's no public interest in restricting the second floor. Uh, therefore, it is not contrary to the public interest to grant the variance. Uh, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. Uh, this is a single-family residence area, and this enhances the value of the property for single residents, uh, for single-family use. Uh, the grant uh, substantial justice because nobody in the area is sacrificing anything uh, for the benefit of the homeowner. The variance is not going to diminish the uh, value of the surrounding properties. Uh, and uh, it would be an unnecessary hardship to uh, require that this uh, lot be brought into compliance in order to add a second floor. Thank you. Mr. Mano. Anything to do? I agree. I mean, Great. this is a little less. They're going up second second story. Yeah, I support pretty, the motion. Pretty simple and straightforward. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I agree also. Great, Great pick for the last one, though. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> right? You're it's lucky not, you yeah. followed We appreciate your brother. I know. I've been waiting patiently. <laughs> we have to vote. Okay. Yes, yes, we do have to vote on it. Here's my uh, voting sheet. I'll let, I'll let Mr. Uh, no. I get it back. I was buried. <laughs> you did. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's, we'll start down at the right-hand side here. Ms. Mr. Mantle? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. <clears throat> Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. Ms. Mar Ms. Margeson. Yes. Ms. Eldridge and Mr. Rossi. Yes. 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 yes as well. Thank you all very much. Okay. For your Thank faith. you very much. Oh, my little Thank, Thank you for staying late for me. I know no. you guys want to go, go home too. So. Thank you. Yeah, Motion to adjourn. You're welcome. Second. Second. Wait, Those can I can just say yeah. one thing please. about the? I sent the email out about moving to iPads. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yes please do. So, I, well, I did send it out. Yes, I, I okay. saw it. I saw your email. Um, yeah. So if before now in the next meeting you could set up time with Isaac, who I copied on the email, he'll he'll if you come in he'll give you like a tutorial on on how to download the packet and everything. Oh, great! Okay. And use the bookmarks and stuff. <clears throat> okay, so you give, him, give him a call. Give him a so call and and then just go okay. come in and get your iPad and he'll set you up. So. Okay. <clears throat> great. Well, you, get, still want you, want to get you want a city one, yeah. You want a city yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. No more folders and stickers. Everybody should make iPads? an appointment before we go in. You should. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So, that's all. We had, I, I, I heard a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And, and there was a second. And there was a second. And, and, and lots of and a vote. How about a voice vote? Aye. 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 Um, Thank you all for your patience. So, no, let's stay longer. Peter.